systems nominal. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another episode of The Amazing Life Show. My name is Mizame. This is the channel for photographers by photographers. And if you guys have heard that slogan before somewhere, because it sounds familiar, it's because it's a direct ripoff of Razer. <laughs> but anyway, um, just want to share, I'm very, very happy to be here today because we do have a very, very, very... Uh, uh, this time, I'm not bluffing you, huh? This time, we're going to really have a very special episode because we are doing this for charity, okay? So, it's my birthday month. Um... We are looking at the month of June and uh, you guys know that I'm being supported by Razor Tip Stream and uh, basically every cent that has gone into Razor Tip Stream so far will be going to the Love Coaching Project by the end of this month. Okay, so for the whole of, for the whole of June, whatever goes into Razor Tip Stream will go straight out to Save the Meow Meows. Alright, so Save the Meow Meows is the theme for today and uh, we're going to have a very special uh, episode for you guys because uh, we do have a wonderful guest who does something very specialized today, all right? But as usual, before we go into the show proper, I'm just gonna share a little bit about what the Amazing Life Show is all about. Um, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes I just forget which button to press. Okay, so I'm still trying to get used to my new Stream Deck. I do have new Stream Decks online, so everything is pretty, uh, yeah pretty alien to me at the moment so I'm, I'm just trying to figure things out and make sure things are working so anyway this is the amazing live show i started this channel for fun <laughs> i'm not kidding you okay originally the idea was really to keep uh fellow photographers accompanied during this crisis period okay you guys know that we do have the covid19 pandemic it's still ongoing now we're in phase two of the circuit breaker but that doesn't mean that the virus is gone no it's it's still around definitely okay so um the the idea of this show is basically to run a photography talk show which can you know benefit hopefully uh fellow photographers who are stuck at home because of the lockdown and things like that all right so anyway just want to share with you guys a little bit about my social media channels there you go friday come on oh friday is not working friday wake up there we go all right so friday is my new chatbot uh she's still a bit clunky i guess uh there you go. So these are my social media platforms. Uh, this is my website and my portfolio. So you guys can take a look at my website. You can see what I do for a living. Uh, at the same time, also, you can click on the live stream. That amazing live show channel link is here as well. You can also read my blog. Uh, once in a while, I do have a blog post. <laughs> once in a while. Okay, so um, recently I just did a review of the Omnidesk Pro 2020. You guys want to check that out. Okay, and I have an announcement to share later. Okay, but before that, okay, this is my Facebook page. Okay, uh, again, oops, you guys should not be seeing that. <laughs> Don't know why it's open. Okay, so um, anyway, just ignore that. Okay, technical issues, whatever. Okay, so this is my Facebook page. Anytime I have a new event or new uh, information um, with regards to the Amazing Life show or new videos or photos, Whatever it is that, that's considered an update, okay, I'll push it up here so you guys can take a look. Um, if you want timely updates, you can follow my Twitter. This is my Twitter channel. Uh, do they call it Twitter channel? No, Twitter profile. This is my Twitter profile. Okay, so you can take a look at my Twitter profile. You can see the latest ongoing um, trends that I'm keeping up with. or I, I do retweet a lot of good stuff. Um, oh, well, very heartbreaking. Ian Holm passed away. Yeah, Bilbo, Bog Bilbo Baggins is off to another adventure. I'm so sorry, I kept saying Boggins. I, I don't know why. But anyway, uh, with regards to Capture One and things like that, I also post updates here as well. Okay, so uh, do check it out. This is also my YouTube channel. Uh, you can actually watch my behind the scenes videos here as well. Um, if you miss some episodes of The Amazing Life Show, you can watch it here. There is um, a playlist dedicated to just The Amazing Life Show. You can check it out. There is it. It's over here. There we go. Okay. So you can see all the previous episodes all listed here. So you can watch from the YouTube channel as well. Okay, so this is my Instagram account. Okay, um, from time to time, I do update my Instagram. I mean, I'm not really that active. I, yeah, I mean, you can follow lah if you want, <laughs> okay? Um, I do post my photos here and there, uh, but recently because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I have not been able to do so because, you know, I've been quite out of it. It's, it's very tough to go out and shoot when you're stuck at home. 
because the going out part is just not possible yeah okay so anyway my twitch channels over here they did something to the twitch okay, so um, anyway my platform, twitch channels over here it looks very different now uh, i think they have a new um new design which i don't quite get to be honest i mean like uh who, who, who can watch this man so weird but you can check out my about section you can see the if you're very curious about what i use for my live streaming you can see my gear it's over here and i'm also a proud member of the singapore streamers sg community all right um now special special announcement to share with you guys now this is something that just went live like uh um on friday afternoon at 12 noon okay so um good news is i am officially the world's first <laughs> I like to see Will's first. First ever ambassador for Omnidesk. So recently I got the Omnidesk Pro 2020. So check check this out. This is really cool. Hey. Can go up. Hey, can go up some more. Okay. Okay. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna live stream with the table up. Yeah, I, I wanna sit down. Okay, so I'm the ambassador for Omnidesk. Um they do have the announcement up already. So if you guys are interested, you can actually check out the Omnidesk website. There is actually a special uh, Great Singapore sale going on right now. Um, or you can actually read this. Okay, I'm the only one here on the ambassador page. Yeah, but it's really cool. And I'm going to share the trailer with you guys before I go into the show uh, proper. But um, this this is... a. <laughs> What's this? Uh, serious as, seriously, Sarah, as she says, I was like thinking, lol, bye, as the keyboard moves away from you. Yeah, it's like, mm, you know, it's totally gone. I can't see it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, do check out this page. Yeah. Yon ZZZ, it is a local company. Yes, that's right. Uh, Omnidesk is based in Singapore. Um, but yeah, so... so <laughs> it's quite funny, you know, if you think about it, the keyboard actually went away. Uh, thankfully, the keyboard is still here. It's back. I, I did not lose my keyboard. Yeah, it's still in one piece. Okay, the whole table just goes up and goes down. Uh, use chatbox... To use chatbot to let chat control your desk. I, I'm not sure if that works. I don't think that there's any way to integrate the desk into the chatbot. And I, I don't think I want to because, you know, if, if chatbot gets taken over by Skynet, uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, have the table turn against me. <laughs> we, we have Sarah here. Not Sarah Corner, but Sarah Colhart. Close enough. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's good to be. Uh, it's good to see everyone here, of course. Uh, and I just want to share this piece of wonderful news with you and before we go into the show proper i'm just going to share with you guys a short trailer about this omdesk ambassadorship and the ambassadorship uh, uh announcement i'm so sorry i'm <laughs> i'm trying to struggle to talk at the same time because my my nose is kind of like stuffed right now it's very hard to speak and i uh, forgive me if i sound very nasal today because i'm still under the weather yeah <clears throat> so sorry about that okay so i'll try my best to keep the sniffles down all right okay stand by The Art of Mezame was founded in 2012 as a hobby page on Facebook, a channel focused on sharing my early artwork and later on, photography works. I started out with cosplay photography, learning from experimenting, assisting other photographers and being mentored by excellent teachers who themselves are photographers, as well as by attending photography workshops. Over the years, The Art of Mezame became a serious enterprise focusing on epic pre-wedding photography which saw cosplay as a theme. I took up more freelance work from 2015 onwards. In 2018, I registered the company and joined the Professional Photographers Association Singapore. We began shooting more commercial and corporate work. I also ran my own photography workshops and seminars alongside my partners in various parts of Southeast Asia. Fast forward to 2020 and most of us are faced with challenges and uncertainty. Surrendering is not an option. With the COVID-19 pandemic, I began focusing on working from home and switching my operations online as a live streamer, running the amazing live show twice a week on Twitch, a photography talk show for photographers by photographers. I realized that as I amass all these equipment for my live streams and photography work, 
I will one day probably face issues with my old desk. For years, I've been eyeing the OmniDesk catalog, knowing full well of their desk capabilities. Editing and retouching photos, and even live streaming can be hard work. Being able to stand while working puts less strain on me. When I saw the OmniDesk Pro 2020, I saw the perfect desk. Most importantly, the desk is able to have a maximum payload of 130kg. I am very confident that the desk can support all of my gear. I am Izami, and today, I am proud to share that I am an OmniDesk Ambassador. Crap, I pressed the wrong button. See, I, I gotta switch that. Okay, I gotta switch that. Sorry about that. Ah, you guys were paying attention. Okay, so guys, today, as I was saying, uh, thank you for the claps. All right, so, <laughs> I pressed the record button instead of the microphone button. I need to change the, I need to switch it around, you know? Yeah, so so uh, anyway, today we have a very important mission. Okay, wow, very pricey. Uh. Look very cool like that. Press all button, look very confident there. After that, press wrong button. But anyway, your Elgato, too many buttons. <laughs> No, I think um, the main problem is because I made the switch, I thought putting a microphone button on top would make more sense, but uh, that was actually a record button. So I was recording myself being a total noob cake. Very embarrassing. That happened live. Okay, you know what? I'm going to switch it around so I will not make the same mistake. Okay, so microphone button goes down. And that's one thing I like about the Stream Deck. Okay, uh, it, is, it is modular. You can design it any how you want. And it's easy to switch the buttons, okay? So this is my Paisei looking face. And I'm really hoping that you guys forgive me and uh, pretend this past 30 seconds didn't happen. <laughs> okay, so anyway, today we have a very special mission, okay? Um, you guys know that today's episode is in support of the Love Kuching Project. Um, so I, I'm a very cat person. My wife is a cat person also. And because it's my birthday month, we decided to like make to this month a, a little bit more special. <coughs> so, <laughs> sorry. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have to work with you guys. Uh, we're going to channel all our Razor Tip stream donations all the way out there up to the end of June to go straight up to Love Coaching Project. Okay, and on top of that, Nicholas, who is my guest speaker today, he is a wonderful pet, po uh, pet portrait photographer. He's also going to uh, give a bit of his own contributions and so do I. I I'll be doing the same thing as well. Okay. Uh, when are you selling your Ding Stream Deck XL? No way, man. I'm keeping all free Stream Decks. <laughs> so anyway, let's check this out. All right. So this is the Love Coaching Project. Okay. Uh, they are basically a community of cat lovers and rescuers in Singapore. Uh, they do a lot of things. Okay. They uh, do rescue uh, missions. Oh, rescue mission sounds very cool. Huh? Okay. They also allow for adoption opportunities for, for people and they also reach out to the public in their outreach programs. Okay. And uh, they do have a community ongoing right now. You can actually uh, volunteer as well. And uh, there are a lot of success stories which, which show how cats are given a chance to uh, live a happier life. I mean, like look at Teddy. Teddy is a three-legged uh, three legged cat. Uh, we have Paul Dorimon. <laughs> <laughs> it's Poe lah, but, but because Poe Domeron from Star Wars, right? So we have uh, Poe Doremon here because it's a it's a cat. Okay, so we have uh, Poe story here so you can read it as well. Uh, you can also adopt a cage. Uh, basically, um, you, know, you know how like, for example, my wife and I, we, we can't have a cat in the house because my mom is scared of cats, my dad is allergic to cats, and there's just too many equipment because I, I don't think it's safe for a cat. So instead of uh, adopting a cat, what we can do is adopt a cage. And this actually allows me and my wife to actually have a cat Data transfer remotely. Complete. If, that, does that make sense? It's like like working from home, but with a with pet. Okay, so that's really awesome. And and I like the fact that they have this option so that um, you guys can, can still have cats without having... Uh, I would say we are having problems having one. I mean, like for us, because it's just not possible uh, at the moment. Okay, so the mission for today, I just want to share with you guys. Uh, right. So basically, this is what will happen if you go to my Resetip stream. All right. Uh, let me just put. Okay. Uh, Friday is gonna share that link with you. Okay. So um, any amount that goes through. The Razor Tip stream, 
Okay, uh, ignore PayPal and Coffee because those are inactive. I need to remove those, but I kind of forgot. But Razor Tip Stream, okay, any amount that goes through Razor Tip Stream, whatever you see here, all the way here, okay, will go out to the Love Coaching Project, all right? And right now, we are at $150.64 USD. That's about $200. So, our target here today is to reach minimum 200 USD, okay? 200 USD is our minimum. If we can go beyond that, that'll be really epic, that'll be really awesome. And I really hope we can give more from the heart, okay? Um, the best part about this is that if you donate through Razor Tip Stream, you will, uh, and please remember this part, uh, you need to donate through Razor Gold, okay? Not through PayPal, through Razor Gold. So to get your Razor Gold shards, you need to buy them through PayPal. I know it sounds very confusing, but once you go through Razor Gold, this is what you'll get. Okay, first of all, you will donate straight to Razor Tip Stream. You'll still get the shots for me, and I convert it into dollars and cents, and I'll donate the whole Ching Gang to uh, our friends at Love Coaching Project. But because you use Razor Gold, you will be able to accumulate Razor Silver Points. Now, what do Razor Silver Points allow you to have? Okay, so as you accumulate over time, what you're gonna have is basically enough points which you can use to redeem any of this epic Razer loot. We are looking at Razer keyboards, mice, headsets, all these wonderful things, even a webcam or so, and a, a earpiece, microphone. So if you're gonna start your own live streaming uh, platform, this is actually one of the best ways to do it because you are doing something good for the cats, you are saving the meow meows, and at the same time, also you will be able to be rewarded with Razer Silver, okay? And today, we actually do have a special guest like I promised you, okay? This is Furry Photos, uh, photography for the modern pet, okay? Uh, we're not gonna have a dog in the studio, but uh, we do have the photographer <laughs> who took the photo of the dog, all right? So, this dog is so cute, right? Okay, so we're gonna actually have uh, Nicholas Lee join us on the channel. So, uh, a little bit of a background info about Nicholas. Uh, in 2006, Nicholas began his professional journey in photographing animals with their human families. Over the years, Nicholas has developed a distinct style of pet photography, creating albums of beautiful memories for clients, full of youthful action shots, family portraits, candid shots of the special relationship between animal and human, and journalistic photographs of daily routines of pets in their homes. He also, he also often photographs photo Wow. <laughs> he also often photographs special celebrations and occasions of families with their beloved pets at parties. Okay, oh my gosh. So cute, right? Parties. And very rarely, weddings of pet owners. Wow. Uh, and anyone here got pets? If you are alone and single, um, maybe you, you, know, you can find another pet lover and then get married, I think, and engage Nicholas as your photographer. Okay, so I think everyone's very excited to see Nicholas. Uh, Nick, are you ready? I think you are. Okay, so I'm um, just gonna call Nick over. <laughs> He's got something in his mouth. <laughs> Nick, welcome to the show. How's it going? Oh no, ask to unmute. Let me unmute for you. Ah, sorry, sorry. There we yeah, go. No I'm problem, man. Well. No problem. It's okay. My turn to Nick, be no. what, what do you have in your mouth just now? You know the poster. <laughs> this is like a tennis ball. You must be very hungry. Have you had your lunch already? <laughs> okay, good, good. Anyway, welcome to the show and thank you so much for being a part of the amazing live show. Today's episode is really awesome because uh, both of us have agreed that... Okay, welcome to the show by Sunset for the cats. Timmer, the Sorry. Google. Hey, Google, stop. Hey, Google, stop. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> for the cats. Yeah, yes. Google, Google is very excited also. I think I think today is all about the Meow Meows and we're going to do something really special for Love Coaching Project and it's great to have you here um, joining us today. And uh, Nick, Nick, to be honest, I... Hey, why got cat? <laughs> That's a human-sized yeah. cat. Yeah, Nick, today we're going we're, we're gonna to turn it uh, a little bit more special. Turn it up a little bit more special, okay? So normally, I always have the interview session with the guests, and then we talk about photography and all that. And we're going to talk about your photography as well, of course. But during the entire show, we're going to encourage those people at home to continue donating so that we can give more to the Meow Meows. Okay? So it's like a, an auction. Uh. No, it's not an auction. It's a donation drive, okay? Donation drive, donation drive. Yeah, donation drive. drive. Okay, so... Um, of course, uh, before we we talk about uh, uh, more about Love Coaching Project, let's find out more about you. Okay, so um, I'm very curious. If I were to just give you five words to describe yourself, what would you <laughs> what would you choose? Uh, yeah. So this one took me a while. So I gave it as introvert, food motivated, creative problem solver. Introverted, food, food motivated, creative problem solver. I know that's six words, but never mind. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was counting away so many. But but wait, wait. Food and motivated are two separate words or food motivated? Yeah, how you call it? Never mind. <laughs> okay, I, actually me too. I, I'm also motivated by food. I see food, I work harder. Yeah, so um, what do you study back in school? Like how far back? Yeah, uh, I... <laughs> Cannot be primary school. Uh. <laughs> computer engineering. Uh. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's kind of funny. Most of the guests who come onto the show, they... Hmm did something completely different from what they're doing now for their living. I mean, like, for example, we had Rene Robin, who was a locksmith, and she's now a composite artist and photographer. You studied computer computer engineering and all that, and now you're a photographer. Um, maybe you can share, do you do any CCA that could probably help you with your current skill sets right now? Uh, in uni, I did join the Photographic Society. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of curious back then, but by joining the society, it kind of developed further. Ah, Okay. So this kind of helped a little bit in, in terms yeah, of so your proficiency. Basic, so I signed up for their basic course, then learn mm. more from them. Okay, so, so before that, I was just like playing around for fun. Um. <laughs> okay. Zeke was saying that so many IT students. Yeah, actually, we, we did have uh, quite a bunch of yeah. uh, photographers. If you get burn from yeah. IT, then you do other things. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, actually, to be honest, uh, when I was in poly, I, I touched a little bit of IT. I, I, I remember my friends and I, back then in poly, we were a bit curious about a lot of things, right? So there was this thing called the, the, the third elective and there was this particular one that calls uh that calls itself modeling. So a lot of us I uh, thought it was like, you know, um, you know, we are in we are in mass comm, we thought modeling like, and all that. So we joined. And it turns out to be 3D modeling. We we nearly died. <laughs> it was really scary. That was the closest thing to IT to be honest. Um okay, so before you go into photography, uh because you said you started in uh twenty oh six, what yeah. were you doing back then before twenty oh six? So I was working in a few related to my degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a sub, doing IT related things subcon for government. Uh, so that's all mm-hmm. I can say before the OSA comes after me. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they'll be watching. So don't worry. <laughs> I, at least I. I hope not. Yeah. Hey, just give me a sec. Uh. uh my Spotify suddenly acted weirdly. Okay. There we go. Now we got background music. It's kind of weird. Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. Murphy, Murphy, yeah. So, you are very familiar with the, the term Murphy's Law as well. And I suppose that in your line as, as a photographer, you've encountered Murphy quite a few times. Yeah, so this, this is normal. Okay, so what drove you to want to do photography? So, uh, initially, as in pet photography or photography in general? Photography in general. Basically, I'm, I can't really draw. <laughs> But I I do like I want to explore creating things mm-hmm. So I think I I probably started out taking like general landscapes, walking around, <laughs> shooting for fun. Like until I joined the photography society and I got more serious, learning about composition, oh, the technical you, part. You joined photography society? Was that like a yeah, the NUS one? Yeah, ah, so NUS. it's a CCA la, basically. Ah, a CCA la. Ah, then then the, so so out of curiosity, what was your first camera? <laughs> like compact camera or DSLR? Wow, okay. Compact camera first. I think it was the Panasonic LX something. Like, those very point and shoot compact camera. Shoot, very like. old one. Those kind of like 2 megapixel. Oh, wow. So you basically, you yeah. started the, during the digital age already. Yeah. yeah, using AA battery one. Wow, that kind of like, super ancient. <laughs> Back then, it was quite scary. Yeah. Um, 2 and megapixel. Even though it considered them expensive already. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was. And, and I think our, our SD card back then. Was it called SD card back then? Or is it CF card? CF card, right? Should be CF card, right? Uh, I think it was called Smart Flash. Smart Something Flash. Something like that. It was oh, a, like a bigger version of SD card. Huh? Yeah, bigger, but the storage capacity is like like nonsense. Yeah. Like, like and last time the CF card is an actual hard drive one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You drop and go on case really. Yep. And, and, and how do you start in photography proper? I mean, like uh, when you started being serious. Okay, so when I, I got into pets actually when I started volunteering for the SPCA. Oh, so they okay. needed photos for the adoption website. So mm. it kind of started from there. Start with handphone camera at that time, then slowly progress up more. Oh, so so back, back, back then when you started shooting for SPC, it was literally with a handphone camera. Handphone camera, yeah. Because it's the. You know, I basically was there to help walk the dogs. Oh, okay, okay. So it's like after walking the dogs, then got time to take some photos. Or, mm. Like yeah. during the walk, take some photos. So it was like a by the way kind of thing, and then eventually yeah, evolved then, into then, something then, else. Then they, they like it, then. Encouragement from there, then I started self learning everything. <laughs> self self taught. The as in the technical skills learned from courses after experiments. Ah, self so so experiment. that's when you pick up your your anim- 
I won't call it animal skills, uh, but you know, you know how we actually in uh when we work with people, it's called people people skills, right? <coughs> I almost said pickle skills. <laughs> you actually work with people. There's people skills. So when when it comes to animals, do we call it animal skills or so? Let, let's call it animal uh, skills. Uh. Related, we can talk more about that later. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, and uh, when you first started your photography, I mean, like, uh, of course, you had your, your, your gig, your SPCA and all that. Did you attempt any other genres of photography, like maybe fashion or portrait or commercial work, anything like that? Uh, going really deep, the only thing, the only other things I was really interested in was either landscapes or wildlife. Mm. So I like to, like, sometimes you've got free, free ticket go zoo, go there, try out moral along lens. Mm. So it's still animal related, animal and nature kind of related. Ah, then so sometimes like uh, uh, you tag on as a second for a wedding just to experience it, like just see what it's like. Mm-hmm. And and you you didn't continue your wedding photography business at all. Uh, there are certain aspects of weddings that I do like, but it's mm. very tiring uh, So not really <laughs> my cup of tea. Yeah, I, I, I can relate to that. Um, to be honest, it's it's a very exhausting job and heads off to all wedding photographers out there. You guys are doing a fantastic yeah. job every weekend. It's like, wow, I don't know how you guys do it. 4am, start, 2am, finish, wow. Yeah, yeah. Chinese wedding is like, what, 3am, wake up, and then 4am, you have to be there or something like that, right? That, that's why I like Depends Malay weddings. Depends Yeah, I like Malay weddings because, you know, 9am, can still sleep, then <laughs> come in at about 11 o'clock like that. <laughs> okay, so... um. Would you say that doing pet photography is it like a like a dream job for you? I would say I really enjoy the process. Mm, the process. So, uh, and meeting you get to basically get paid to meet dogs and play with them now. Mm. Taking photo on the side line it's just to give the delivery, but the core is meeting the dogs and sometimes the people. Mm-hmm. I know a few of my clients are watching right now. <laughs> a few of your clients are watching right now. That's cool, that's cool. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the behind the scenes. Uh, I know I was supposed to play, play this trailer earlier, but I think it, it sounds cooler if I play it into the segue. Because um, I, I really want to show people how it is like to work with so many cats. <laughs> and I think it's really amazing. I showed this to my wife yesterday and she was like, how did he do it? <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so as promised just now, this is actually the way to uh, contribute to the Razor Tip stream right now. And uh, this is how you can actually use your phone to scan the QR code and head over to the page where you can start your donations to support the life, uh, sorry, to support the Love Coaching Project. Okay, and uh, if you guys uh, want to, you can also follow, subscribe. There's the arrow in the top right hand corner to show support for this channel as well. Okay, donate more. Donate more. <laughs> Okay, so Nick, that was really awesome. Um, so many cats, 13 cats all together and you managed to yes. capture all of them. Um, I think my wife yesterday, she said this. Uh, what was it that she said? Like, how, how, do you, how do you get them to pose? How do you control them? So many all, all everywhere. The, the cats are everywhere, literally. It's like herding cat, right? Literally. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you're, you're like a cat whisperer of sorts. You know, you, you can get them. I saw some of the shots of Pass of the time lapse where you actually get them to to um, pose on the sofa, for example. Ah, so this okay, so this is a B two B client, so it's a bit different from how I approach B two C. So we had 
basically uh when i knew they're going to open in singapore the first one mm-hmm. i approached them first mm-hmm. just to find out their philosophy everything right they're really nice people they really take care of the cats and okay so uh i did a butter trade with them uh, basically for the mm-hmm. shoot mm-hmm. so it's quite it was quite an interesting shoot uh. so by talking there i basically explained to them how i intend to work uh i because they are the ones most familiar with how the cats behave yep and they mentioned that they already acclimatized the cats to that cafe environment for I think about a month plus really. So the cats are really comfortable in the area. So uh, and they're comfortable with people coming in and in and out. Uh. So me coming in won't be like a shock to them. Also. Ah, so the cats are used yeah. to human uh, yeah. or so strangers. For most of the shoot basically it's just uh, they gave me a short list of what they need. Uh. So basically they need at least one full body and one portrait of every single cat. Oh, then the rest is up to me to decide already. So one, they one full body and one one portrait, like passport photo lah, because they needed the profile photo for the website. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. Yeah, and, they and... needed full body for the menu system. Mm. And back then, how long have you been doing this for? When you, when uh, this shoot was 2015? 16? 15, five yeah. years ago. So, so it's you... about ten years. Ago. Ten years already. Wow. Yeah. So so you kind of so, know the nuances of working with cats already so, like, by then. Yeah. But okay, so shout out again to Love Coaching Project. They are the ones that really trained me for all this. Oh, so so Love Coaching Project also trains people. No, 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 I, I, I use my experience. Shoot <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I thought it was another, you know, hidden yeah. uh, skill set that they can uh, offer. Self learning, self learning. Ah, self learning. Okay, OG, so self OGP. Mm, and let's go back into the past a little bit. Uh, so what? Fi- <coughs> sorry, sorry. I'm really still under weather. So forgive me for that. Um, what difficulties do you face at first when you first picked up photography? Number one was cost. As a student, mm-hmm. everything is damn expensive, man. Yeah. So, yeah, last time is really at least thankfully we still had handphone camera that was passable mm-hmm. to at least play around. Then basically, uh, the only DSLR I got for back then was a film one, lah, So you learn from there again. But the problem with that is you should should then you wait two three days then you get back the feedback. Yeah. The yep. process is quite a lot slower. Yeah. Yeah. So, so cost was the uh, number one issue. And I think back then... In yeah, and, yeah, basically in uni, you don't really study that much. Nah, then you've got a lot of time to try. <laughs> <laughs> so time, time was actually a helpful factor, lah, not a difficulty. Lah, but uh, it's a cost. Mm. You know, um, I think yeah, back then, especially when starting out, it's an expensive hobby, especially mm-hmm. when you're a student. And I think uh, in the past, uh, 2006 cameras, like a simple Canon 400D, which is a rebel to some people in, in, who are watching it from the States, uh, it cost about 2.4k sing with the kit lens it was yeah it was around there so, so it was quite expensive even for APS-C and, and now it's a lot more accessible it's a lot more affordable we have Canon cameras going for what $600 I think so it's it's, mm. it's, it's so different and and yes I agree with what some of the folks are saying on the chat box uh, Kaitudia says expensive hobby for students he felt that so hard he himself is a student so he, he, he can, he can the, relate take part time job to work yeah then you tell yourself that oh I can buy this gear now mm-hmm so literally work towards the next piece of gear. Uh, yeah. sounds, sounds like my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, just now you talk about uh, uh, how you 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 know work with SPCA going into pet photo- uh, animal yeah. photography. That was probably your first time venturing out into this genre. Um, yeah. When you first started out, did you encounter any resistance from your parents or family or anyone at all? Uh, as in... Because back then it was a hobby, they didn't really get on my case, so it's mm-hmm. okay. Ah, so yeah. they're encouraging you to... Or as in, maybe as long as you go. continue studying, you go IT job, ah, okay. <laughs> kind of a standard Asian parent. Uh. <laughs> standard Asian parent. Uh, what, what was that? They, they, they said... Uh, safe job. Uh, uh, safe job, you need to be a lawyer or architect or, or what's the other one, I can't remember. But uh, being a photographer is a different thing altogether. It's not really encouraged. But... Yeah. Having said that, after so many years in, in the business, now I think coming to 2006, 14 years, I think? Is it 14 years already altogether? It's 23 oh, years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quite some time already. Um, any regrets pursuing the craft? No, I, I really I really like this. As in, it really gave me an avenue to explore creative energy. Uh. Mm-hmm. That's good. So, and yeah, like, some would say it helped me come out of my shell a bit, but... Mm. Yeah, in good. the end, every time I just look for the animals. Uh. <laughs> and okay, 
Now, now let's not talk about animals for a while. Let's talk about the human side, okay? Um, how do you go about securing a photo shoot with a client? Can you share your onboarding process? Okay, so generally, most of my clients are either discovering me through Google for some reason. Mm-hmm. I think because my website has been up there for damn long. So organic searches are still quite strong. I'm mm-hmm. thankful for that. Uh, the, I would say more than 80% right now are word of mouth referrals. Oh, yeah. good. So either repeat clients or clients, they post, then their friends see, then they contact me. Yeah. So generally when clients contact me, I will, they ask me, hey, what's your price? How does it go? I have template replies to get them to tell me more information. Mm. And uh, the most important thing I do is I set up a face-to-face consult mm. before anything happens. So I meet them and most importantly, meet the dog or cat as well. So I'm basically interviewing more their dog than them. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, That's interesting. Yeah, so the, when I meet them, I talk to the, the humans to find out what they want out of the shoot. Mm-hmm. To, just to get a feel of whether I'm suitable for them. Uh, the way I work, my style. Because sometimes they just see a nice picture, then they just blast out inquiry, then mm. for fun. Uh. So the part about interviewing the dog okay, is I will ask them more about like, the dog's habits. Oh, okay. Is the dog more food motivated, more play motivated? When are they more active? Where do you normally bring them? Then if the dog is there, I will try and interact with the dog to see how they react to strangers. Hmm. Like, the, so the, it's, it's a two-way process. Of. So, so, so do, you, do you like have um, like, like uh, a strategy on how to open up to the aura? Let yourself be uh, approachable towards the, the, the animals. Yes, so uh, as part of self-learning, mm-hmm. I self-learn uh, things like dog and cat body language. So you learn to read. So you, uh, it's also for safety reasons. Uh. Mm. So you look out for signs of stress in animals. Then at the same time, you learn how to position and do your own body such that you appear as non-threatening as possible. Is, is, there, the is there like a, a thing you wear or something like, like colors to avoid or, or you know, uh, Generally, to avoid? it's not so much of what you wear, mm-hmm. it's how you move. Oh, how you move? Yeah. And, and for so dogs, how you, how you move. Um, I, I've done a few courses on this, like, as in, uh, for the Photoric Society and came back to give talks before. So mm. it's like how you approach uh, strange dogs. So yeah. for in most cases, what you always do is you let the animal come to you. You don't go to them. Oh, so yeah. So so because, okay. So the idea is that uh, especially for dogs that are a bit more timid, uh, and there are lots. Generally, dogs and cats are a lot smaller than you, lah. Mm-hmm. So if you imagine suddenly somebody like towering over you and just going like that, in your I'll, face, I'll right? run away from my live stream right yeah, now. Yeah. So the idea is you try and let them come to you, lah, when they're yeah. comfortable. But most of the dogs I met. The kinds of dogs are friendly, so mm. it's just the outliers. Sometimes the kinds will actually warn me in advance that oh. uh, they uh, he might be this. So uh, just when you come in, don't do these things. Uh, so then I will talk to them slowly. Then that that's good. Okay, so for for those people who actually are thinking of doing uh, pet photography as well, uh, is there like some kind of a body mask or scent or deodorant that they need to avoid? Because you know some some animals can be quite sensitive when it comes to smells. Okay, I'm gonna give away a trade secret here. Oh, okay. Before my shoots, I do not shower. Ah, oh, why? Uh, sometimes overly perfumed scents can put the animals off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, so I try to not shower before the shoot. Most of my shoots are the first thing in the morning, so I'm also not so bad. Right. <laughs> I'm reading the chat box right now. It looks like some of your friends have actually said uh, they know you more, better than me. <laughs> they say that uh, you have to smell, you have to, they, they, some of them have to smell you for days. And, and, <laughs> and you're saying you never shower normally. Oh dear. <laughs> hey, thanks. Uh, it, it's quite interesting how, how, how you know, I, I, to be honest, I never thought uh, that, that, that you, you shared it with us on this public forum. But, but it's good that you're honest, so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, doesn't work for all photographers. Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> so some photographers, they just smell bad and then still cannot take the photos. No, right? quite bad. Right, right. <laughs> so the sacrifice is not worth it, huh? <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, like uh, maybe next time when I shoot models, I, I'll try not to shower and see what happens. I, I don't think it will, it will end up the same way or so. But uh, 
Diony is very very vocal. Yeah, Diony that's said, why I shoot, you, shoot you know, outdoors this... so the wind blow away. <laughs> so you have to shoot downwind. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, Diony's sorry, Dionysus Grace. I think it's is someone who who work with you quite often. I guess. Uh, I think it's a she. She said that uh, you have a very unique smell. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, okay. If as close as possible to whatever it is um, that 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 sounds normal. I mean, like, uh, what 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 do you think you smell like? I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> would, you, would you say cheeseburger? What oh, thanks, ah. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's smell like a giant treat, right? So, yeah, like, giant treat. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, giant treat. That that would be more <laughs> accurate. Okay. And and where do your clients? So I'm not really flattered mm. by that. Ah. Good, good, good. Okay, so where where do your clients come from mostly? Are they mostly uh, from Singapore, or do they fly in from overseas to to engage you and things like that? Currently, mini local. I've, I'll be. I don't think anybody has flown in Singapore just for a pet shoot before, because mm. of the quarantine laws. Oh yeah, because of quarantine lah. Yeah, but what yeah. what if one day you know uh the quarantine, I mean the pandemic is gone and and all that. Do you see uh any any chance of you expanding overseas and getting clientele from overseas as well? I would be interested to get flown overseas to do mm. location show like some wedding guys do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but pets a bit different now. Uh. So far, I don't think anybody in Singapore has got invited overseas to shoot pets. You never know. Someday, someday, if anyone's I watching right now, what shoot overseas? Uh-huh. Uh huh. But that was uh because I was on holiday lah. Uh, then I happened to follow this account on Instagram also, so I decided to. Hey, I'm free today. Let's let's shoot me up for fun, nothing. Oh, okay. So if anyone's watching right now, if you have uh, if you're living overseas, not just in Singapore, and if you have a pet and you want to engage a very professional pet photographer, you can always look out for Nick over here. All right. So Nick, that's a shout out for you. I'll I'll, I'll send you the invoice later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, bro. Okay. So um, when we look at photo photo shoots normally, I mean like for me, I come from a commercial photo shoot background. I always have my uh, producer, my assistants, my crew, and all that. How about yourself? Do you have your own crew or do you work solo? Most of my shoots I go solo, but uh, as you can see, the very vocal lady there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's the unofficial assistant. <laughs> Re- Reflector personnel. That's what she calls herself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, so so sometimes she's the one holding the reflector or mm. or dancing behind me to get the dog's attention, that kind of thing. Ah, so so yeah. you do have someone who actually tries to get the attention of the animal. So that sometimes, so the depends on the shoe, lah. Mm, mm, mm. Like if I feel that I might need help with this, yeah. or like if especially young kids, mm-hmm. so I can handle pets, but I can't handle young kids. But she can. Oh wow! Does she go with a teacher voice or something like that, or like hey? Sit down properly, or otherwise, teacher will school you. That kind of voice, or or something. Uh, <laughs> corn up. Another one I think who probably knows you says that uh, Dionysus is an in-house clown. <laughs> <laughs> we we have a term for for assistants who hold reflectors in the industry. We call it voice activated light stands. So <laughs> they 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 activate. Upon voice command, so that's how useful they are. I stand here, angle here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll turn it <laughs> automatically. You know, it's like a motorized, you know, but it's all natural. Okay, um, just want to share your your day life, like uh, working with animals. How tough is it? Uh, as in for a shoot itself. For a shoot itself. Uh, most of my shoots are actually thankfully very short, like mm. under three hours. We wrap. Oh. Uh, most the most shown part is when I have to get action shots. Ah yes, see I, I've one. seen some of your action shots where the dogs have to run and things like that. So, so some um, of the shots I have to run with them. Whoa. Also, <laughs> yeah. So like so the shots going around with them or like I hot sun everything uh, yeah. You mm. be standing, kneeling, proning, doing all the all the positional changes. Yep. Yep. And also because you be you have to react very fast. Uh. Yes. Yes, and and uh, I think the re- reaction time is the one that's most important. You have so many things to consider, like suddenly the animals may change angle, and you have to react to that, and then you have to get your camera ready and all that. It, it sounds like a lot of hard work. Yeah, and uh, what about cats in particular? Because we know cats can be quite territorial and they can be quite aloof and all that. Um, is it harder working with cats as opposed to working with dogs, for example? So, uh, cats, the consult is doubly important. Mm. Because normally it's your first time uh, meeting them in the house, how they react to you will kind of set the tone of how you come in when you go for the shoot itself. Uh. 
Yeah. So generally, if the cat comes in very scary thing, I will talk to a client and set the expectation that I may not be able to get anything. Yeah. Yeah, so, or at the most one or two. But uh, the body language thing similarly applies, uh, but cats are even more sensitive to these things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, again, cats, you let them approach, you try not to go up to them. Ah, okay. And uh, do you how how much time do you spend with the, the the pets before you actually go out to shoot them? For for example, like cats, uh, the, the 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 part where you actually have to interact with them and all that. How long does that take before you actually can commit to the shoot? Uh, so normally the pre shoot consult is about an hour or so. That is just for me to get a general feel. If they really want certain shots, mm -hmm. I actually have done it before when I have visited a client's house about four times before the actual shoot. Oh, four times! Wow, she paid for it, lah. Oh, of course. <laughs> so it's like she, because she really wanted that boy's mm. face mm -hmm. with her, lah. So and he was quite timid. So oh. four times, oh. Every time you just go there, one two hours, sit, just sit around, let them sniff you out, get used to you being in the house, and kind of thing, mm. Do 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 cats uh react very? I mean. In, in a shocking way sometimes when, when, when they meet a complete stranger such as yourself or do they just you know slowly come out and then after that you know sniff you and then after that oh, it really depends on like, the cat it depends on the cat yeah it can be anything mm -hmm. like I have a friend's cat who one person in the house okay two people okay three people okay four people that's it disappear oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. quite, quite common I, I had uh, my aunt's cat uh, it's a person very friendly but once you see the whole family come in, uh, like during you know visitations, uh, like, oh, no, you don't that, oh that's it. Hide under I the bed forever. <laughs> but very cute cat, uh, and I love cats, lah. Yeah, uh, sorry, I kept getting distracted by your cat behind. I kept wanting to pet it. <laughs> Kuchinta. Okay, so, um, when you work with animals, like for example, I think this one I I, I have to ask this, because I saw I I I saw I saw that you actually work with birds as well. How don't... do you work with them? So the one really ad hoc, that that bird <laughs> shot was uh my friend's birds. I was just trying for fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm still not too, still not that well versed in how to read birds yet, but uh I basically studied people who do bird photography. Mm -hmm. As you just look at their pictures, see, then uh, you look at their compositions, then you decide what kind of works, what kind of doesn't work, and you just scale it down for pet birds. You know? mm -hmm. Now, speaking of uh, tough animals to work with, uh, which animal would you say is the toughest to work with? Hmm. Cats, dogs, birds, anything beyond? I think that I don't have that much experience with basically birds and smaller animals like hamsters and anything. Mm. So I would, I would not say I'm good at those yet because I really have not much experience. Uh. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hamsters. So it's a bit different lah, because I'm really familiar with how to handle dogs and cats and everything else, but those small animals are a bit, a bit different. Mm. And uh, what what will you do if an animal totally refuses to cooperate during a shoot? Uh, okay, so that's what the pre-shoot consult will catch up. Mm, mm, mm. That's so good. that's why I insist to try and meet the owners and the pet itself. So I did have a case where uh, in the house when I met the dog, the dog was very defensive. Mm. But in the dog run, the dog was okay. Ah, okay. Nah, so that kind of thing. Uh, so then, during the consult, uh, it, was, it was trying to get to know you better. Then after that, during the actual shoot, it was, it was fine already. Yeah, so ah, yeah, basically you can't, you can't go near the owners with the dog in the house. So the, the dog was very de defensive of the owners itself. Oh. Because you're a stranger, so it's like very protective kind of thing. You know? Right, right, right. And, and yeah. how, how do you uh, gain the trust of the, 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 the dog? In the end, uh, time will just sit there. Time. Basically, the body language thing, uh, so you communicate to the dog that I'm not trying to hurt you or your owners mm -hmm. through body language. Yep, and, and, and some I, sounds. I think I think you're like a the animal whisperer when it comes to working with animals. You know, somehow you just exude that kind of friendly tone so that the, the animals will be like, ah, this guy is actually okay. I'm I can I can hang Don't out with shower. you. Oh, don't shower yeah <laughs> okay um let's talk a little bit about some of your actual shoots <coughs> any ones any shoots that are particularly memorable uh yes i do have one mm. it was in 2018 
2018. So uh, this shoot was basically uh, friend's dog lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, he's basically my kind of like go-to training model at that time. So like almost once a week for a for a few years, I was hanging out at her place, shooting her dog, just trying out new things. Right. That so I kind of like grew grew together with that dog lah. So mm. 2018 was uh, the last birthday that uh, we, we had together. So it was mm. three, we shot over three days, a lot of things just for fun. Mm. So that, the whole show was very, very, very memorable for me. Did you happen to have the shots of the that shoot? Yeah, let me check. That shoot the... Okay, so... Yes, okay, I can share this one. <laughs> okay, cool. Here we are, that's not the door. Complete. Is it sharing correctly? Yep, yep, I can see it. Okay, so yeah, this and there's a lot of photos. So basically, we uh, it's basically, it was basically the dog's birthday and I was celebrating it with the dog. Mm. So uh, one of my favorite series was uh, when we went to Sentosa itself. Okay. So ah. this is his brother. This is the this is the birthday one. The so birthday handsome. Dog. Yeah. Oh, is it the same dog for the poster that we, that we did? Yes, ah. it is. His name is Flapper. Flapper. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this was this was like the third stop of the day already. Yeah. So it's like they went two places, then they went to that. Uh, so earlier uh, it was a few shots of the dogs with some old folks because mm-hmm. they used to do dog therapy for uh, for these old folks also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and uh, could you share a little bit about the concept behind the shoot? Like why shoot at the beach? Uh, because the, uh, basically the beach was his favorite place to go. Uh. Ah, I see. He just loves the beach and swimming in general. But uh, so okay, uh, shot, huh? So handsome. So this is what he likes to do a lot. <laughs> like, then because his fur is so thick, right? Every time he rubs in the sand, it uh-huh. just goes in. Then then the owner will spend the next few days in that house with a sandy floor. Uh. No matter how many times you shower. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Then uh the so what are the rare times where you can get a very nice golden hour in mm. Sentosa. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Oh so gorgeous. I love this shot. I, I love this shot very much. This was one of my favorites from that session. Oh yeah. yeah. Then the next few days we went other places. So I like, go parks in the morning. Go we went to swim for two times. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, this one is uh, basically uh, it also allows me to explore certain places and check the light out like, right? yep. so, so this was at actually near Bedok Reservoir mm. in the Str- evening strange you, you nice share with me that there's Bedok Reservoir because uh, every time I go there it's it's not the, the light is not that beautiful okay. but you may capture to it yeah. ah, uh, Coney Island nice place to shoot so a lot oh, of people yes. like to shoot wedding there yep yep yeah but then get things like this though. it come on Let's go in the morning when nobody's there. <laughs> and and I can see that you have got so many different uh, focal lengths for your shots and all that. Could you share a little bit about what's inside your bag when you go out for shoots like this? Ah, so mm. uh, generally I I I favor primes a lot. Mm-hmm. So I used to be on Canon. Um uh, my Canon kit was a 24, a 50, 85, and a 7200. Mm. So kind of covered the ranger. Yep. So my current Fuji kit is a uh, sixteen, a thirty-five, and a ninety prime. So that's a twenty-four, fifty, and one three five equivalent currently. Do you probably do you have... might be saving up for the telephoto zoom? Ah, but why 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 then. switching why why the switch to Fuji? At that time, the five D three Y was a great camera. It was starting to show its age already, <laughs> and yeah. uh, the size and weight. Like the you can get a similar quality for a much much smaller lighter package. Yep. Yeah. So that was the main draw for me at the time, and I love how Fuji handles the colors. Yeah, that's true. There's a certain look about Fuji colors that that makes you want to shoot more. It feels like mm-hmm. film for some strange reason. Uh. Okay. Cool. Then uh, when when you look at how you advertise and and uh, you know uh, share your works online like that, how how often do you use social media to market yourself these days? Ah. Uh, so. If I'm diligent, I try and do it at least 
two to three times a week. Mm-hmm. During this period, I've been very quiet. I think it's because of the yeah. pandemic, lah. Yeah. Mm. So not much new material. Alright, so okay. my okay. coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon, I guess. Now we are in phase two. Yeah. Yeah. So phase two of circuit breaker is already in effect since Friday. Um, as of what's the date? 19 uh, 19th of June? Oh, that was just yesterday, right. actually. <laughs> See, uh, you, you stay at home the whole time, right? you, you just lose track of time. There's no day. Yeah, there's no day, there's no night. Uh, especially in my bunker here, there's no window. So you, you, you just can't tell. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is a bit funky right now. Um, oh, asking for more cat pictures. Okay, can cat later, pictures, later. Yeah, yeah, we share more Myanmar pictures later, don't worry. Okay, so uh, Nick, during the opening sequence of the show, I showed a behind the scenes of the shoot with uh, Neko No Niwa, which is uh, yes. Singapore's first cat cafe. Um, when 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 you take the shots and all that, um, I'm just want to ask you this. It's kind of fun. Um, cats are notorious for being very aloof, right? Do you how many times do you have to take the shot per cat before you actually go like ah, that's the one I want. Uh, okay, so I was lucky in the sense that this one is not a, a traditional B two B commercial mm-hmm. type shoot where there's a creative director, somebody to approve all shots. Right, basically, yep. I'm thankful that they trusted me a lot. <laughs> basically, when I think is when I I just checked that I got the shot. Okay, then we move on to next cat. Mm. So basically, what happened was, uh, go into the shoot, give me the list of all the names of the cats, mm. and based on that, uh, they tell me what the markings are. Then mm. I started to memorize like which cat is which immediately on the spot. So wow. I know. So if I shoot this one, then I basically have to write down like, okay, this one, what cut have I taken the uh, passport? Have I taken the full body? Then this one done already, check, okay, again, then move on next cat. Then mm. after like one hour, see what else is still missing, then try and target those cats. So. Right. But basically because the owners of the cafe are there and they are the ones that handle the cat every time. So the cats respond very well to them and they know exactly how to get the performance mm. to say out of them. Yep. Could, could you share some of the photos that you took during uh, that session with Neko Ni- no, sorry, Neko no Niwa? This one is a shot. Okay, Neko... so this is not the full set. Mm. It's okay, just share a few. I think a lot of people want to see more meow meows. <laughs> Neko no Niwa means uh, something Japan. Uh, uh, some, something cat, cats in Japanese. Cat right? garden, I think. Cat garden. Ah, okay. I can't remember. I, I only know Kimi no Nawa. Is it? <laughs> uh, so yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that, so curious. All oh, lovely. Oh, this is so gorgeous. These were all on the canon. I was still on canon, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I like the fact that they are looking at your camera. Um, uh, is it because you're the assistant? Like... the owner behind me. Lah, so. ah. <laughs> all the small things. So gorgeous. So I, it, basically, a lot of things to get the, the eye line of the animal or the dog. It's mm. you use toys, treats, or something that catches their attention visually. Uh. Yep. But there are other tricks. Uh. Mm. Okay, that's so, so there are people who've seen me shoot before will understand why you mean by other tricks. Yeah, so handsome. Uh, my wife is like watching right now. She's like, the cat's so handsome. Yeah, Lenya is yeah, a, this, she's this so This boy is called Brown Monkey. A what, what? Sorry? His name is Brown Monkey. This one is called Brown Monkey. Yeah. Which part of it is a monkey? Does he yeah. jump around and all that? This is, these are actually taken from two different timelines, so that you can see how it grew up. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, so much fluffier now, eh? Yeah. This, so, oh this guy still has the best name. <laughs> What's the name? The, the chat, unless you've gone to this cafe before, you won't be able to guess his name. Um... Try. His name is Mr. White. <laughs> Sorry? Mr. White. Mr. <laughs> Don't ask me why, you are the owners. <laughs> Mr. White. Uh, yeah. Mr. White, you look so gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. But okay, so this is the this oh, is that's the so gorgeous. Uh, yeah, the one wanna... that will really draw the people in. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh man. Look, look, guys. Look at this cat. Look at this cat. Yeah, she's basically the <sighs> star of the cafe, yeah, But she's Blue interestingly, eyes. she's also apparently the social glue of the cat <coughs> colony. Because uh-huh. she she grooms all the other cats, so she mixes their scent together to make like a community scent. It's quite interesting. Wait, wait. This uh, people are saying Emma. Is is that Emma? Yep. Emma, that's him. It's a female cat, right? Yep. So she's she's like the the, the 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 mother cat that looks after all the other cats. Uh, not really. She's basically like the social butterfly that kind of brings all the cats together. I see. Yeah. <laughs> and she looks so gorgeous. Like, ah, uh, look at that. Oh man, cats are so amazing. Yeah. Cats are just so. Uh, yeah, they open. Know. They just open. They just got permission to open in phase two, so you can go visit them also. 
Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. And, and you, you see, I, I look at Emma. I'm like so lost in her eyes. Her eyes are blue and so beautiful, and, and I totally forgot what I'm, I'm what I'm supposed to do next. Uh, yeah. So uh, sorry. So anyway, I just want to pop in over to the 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 reason tip stream. Let's see how much people have been donating so far, because uh, I do hear a lot of people like you know chiming in and stuff like that. And I'm very sorry you know, for for those people who are. I think Sarah just now was saying that the uh, the shots were like over the place. Um, Apparently, the latest update to Streamlabs OBS kind of screwed up my notification window, so I'm trying to resize them on the fly. So let's let's see how we are doing okay. with Resolute Stream. Yeah, just give me a sec. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah, they all machine. Yeah, they are all basically. So the unique thing about this cafe is they are all adopted cats. Mm. Okay, so we started with 150. Oh, we we have surpassed 212, guys. Wow. We are at 212 Ooh. USD 64. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, you know what? Let's try to go for the goal, alright? So we've already passed 200. I would like you guys to try to get beyond 250 now, okay? So again, the QR code is over here. For the Meow Meows, do it, okay? Uh, in 10 days time, you can see the countdown actually. Uh, in 10 days time, I'm gonna take all this money out and we're gonna give it all to Love Coaching Project. On okay, top we of it would be more interesting, we've got about one hour plus left to the show, right? Yeah, so, it's got time. Uh, if we, for every dollar, in USD, I will match in Sing dollar. Wow. Up to 300. Up to 300. So you can hit 300 USD by the end of the show, I'll match 300 Sing dollars. Guys, do it for the Meow Meows. Let's, let's do this, man. I, I'm very excited for this. And, and I also have my own uh, my own personal contribution as well as my wife's. We, we're going to contribute also. Uh, but we're not going to do it through a resistive stream now because ours will go direct. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's easier. It'll be funny for me to donate to myself because it doesn't work that way. It, they prevent me from doing that. Um, did Nick just increase his matching? Yes, yeah, he, he did. I posted as two hundred, but yes. Yeah, he just increased up to three hundred, guys. So three hundred is like a, it's like a big jump, and then uh, I, I cannot, I cannot be outdone by by my guest. <laughs> I cannot be outdone by my guest. I need to go higher. So, <laughs> so um, yes, uh, the Amizami will also match uh, whatever Nick is contributing, so we can uh, save the Meow Meows and and ha help them have a better life as well. Okay, so let's try for. What, how much is it? 300 is it? USD 300 our match has 300 sing. Oh, USD 300, 300 sing. Okay, let's let's go for that. Okay, guys, this is our mission for today. I think we've, we've done it to 200. Let's go for higher. Okay, let's do this. Okay, and if you can, uh, maybe you can share with your friends on social media. Let them know that we are having a special donation drive for Love Coaching Project on the live stream right now. And at the same time, you can find out more about what Nick does for his uh, pet photography. I think it's, it's a very special, unique thing that he has. Uh, in fact, I think, Nick, I think you're, you're probably the only pet photographer I know on a, on a professional level. I think so. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I know more cats than pet photographers. <laughs> it's a very niche genre and Singapore is, market is not that big. Lah, so. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I, I'm just curious, on a personal level, what do you shoot for fun? Uh, like so earlier, I still enjoy like doing landscapes, landscapes and animals, and, right? And, and, mm. and I can do it. Then, just saying, like what I did doing uni, like if you can go zoo, I still enjoy. Ah, so like, so it's still the same, like, same so hobby. It's kind of related, mm -hmm. and sometimes for fun, if I go the rare social gatherings, I will bring a camera just for the heck of it, just to see what I can get, like. mm. So it's like the, <laughs> so what I enjoyed when I was doing second more weddings was doing the candid stuff so mm. it's like a bit of street but just carry, trying to capture things that happen in between yep yep that's awesome and and uh, just now you said that you hope to go overseas to shoot and all that now let me ask you this do you have dreams of shooting for maybe like the National Geography or something like that I would like I guess that would be a, a nice a nice thing I don't think I could sustain that kind of thing shooting for a magazine because Again, the deliverables and everything. Mm. Maybe as a like a one-off project, if I could like get hired to do some some like photo essay on a social cause that's related to animals mm. by Net, Net Geo, I think that would be great, oh. yeah. like that. If you yeah. do end up on Net Geo, uh, remember this session today. Remember <laughs> me. Don't, don't forget. Anyone from Net Geo listening? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Nigel is listening. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Because I, I did tag uh, there's animal photography here. So, <laughs> so yeah. hopefully, hopefully. Okay, so let's take a look at, at, at Life's a Beach. One of a, oh, did I pronounce that right? Um, this Life's one has a flapper beach. in it as well. Sorry? This one has flapper in it. Oh, so, flapper. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just now, actually, I wanted to show you earlier, but I, I guess we, we had some uh, interesting 
chatter on the chat box that, that made mm-hmm. me want to ask those questions first instead. Yeah, let's take a look at Flapper in action. Did I play the wrong trailer? I did, right? <laughs> Just one sec. This is trailer 2. Okay, I am going to do a quick debug. So apparently, Stream Deck also got a new update that kind of filled me. Ciao, tomate Uh, Trailer 2. Yeah, this is correct. Why is it not correct? Data transfer. Complete. This is me troubleshooting live. <laughs> okay, so let me try to find <laughs> that trailer <laughs> again. Uh, I can't debug it on the spot because it's live. Okay, you know what? I think it's trailer three, because this is <laughs> mismatch. So weird. The GoPro shot is supposed to be trailer two. Let's try again, huh? There we go. Okay, and once again, uh, this is a call out for people to uh, do the Razor Tip stream to show support for Love Coaching Project. Alright, so if you guys can, head over to the QR code, scan it with your camera phone, or just hit follow and subscribe to get notified when you when this channel goes live again. Uh, but if you scan your QR code here through the Razor Tip stream, that's where you can actually donate to our, or contribute to our goals where we're going to support our Love Coaching Project friends. Okay, so that's really awesome. Okay, so... Nick, welcome back. Sorry about that. I had a lot of issues with my my setup today. I don't know why. I think I think it's because this is what happens when you're working through the night, uh. I think you're aware uh, I was I was setting up everything at 3 a.m. last night. <laughs> so many things happening this week, guys. It's it's crazy. But yeah, yeah. You had a nice little preview of uh, another uh, special video by Free Photos, and that involves I think it's a birthday party. But we'll yep. go into that later. Yeah. So. In this particular shoot, you actually had a POV of uh, the doggos running. I think we have Slapper and I think uh, the other one is called Dodo, is it? The only... Affectionately known as Dodo. La, Dodo. But his actual name is Frodo. Mm. And then uh, when, when, you, when you had this kind of uh, shoot done, uh, were there any concerns with regards to the setup and all that? At that time, it was still... The, I think there was like Hero 4 Black mm-hmm. and it just came out so it was damn long ago. Yep, so yep. yeah, I was just trying out to see how it would work. Uh, I don't know whether this was... I think this was after GoPro came out with your official mount harness already. Mm. So back then you didn't have a mount harness I proper? A bit. So initially, uh, my first experience was because uh, I was shooting the wedding with the dogs. Mm. And they wanted a POV of the dog coming in with the owner. Right. So that, that was the before this lah. So after this then we just carry on to see what other kind of shots we could get no. <laughs> yeah. And, so, yeah. So, so so this is hmm? wait, someone said can't hear Nick. Can't hear Nick? Really? Nick? Can you say something? I'm talking now. Yeah, your can levels you are okay. Guys can you hear Nick? Muted. Nick a bit soft. Okay. I think Okay. Now okay? Okay good. Go close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay. Oh people yeah. saying that you sounded a bit muffled just now. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, uh, cat fur lah. <laughs> okay, so so um why why would anyone want to have an animal's POV? 
at that point, I, uh, I, it was unique, mm. more at least more unique at the time because not many cameras could actually follow the dog as they do. Yep. And I was also personally curious of what the action looks like from the dog's perspective. Uh. Right. Good. Uh, this was before all the new cheap motorized gimbals. Ah, yes, yes. So that's why the motion was... So the video is actually Shaking slowed down about place. four four times or more already. Not as really mm. like, just you already okay already. Uh. Yep, yep. It's all good. I think uh, it's, it's very nice to see uh, from the annual's perspective in terms of yeah. storytelling. Uh, the, the concept is very, very uh, unique by itself. Um, I, I've, I've always thought that it would be quite interesting to see how animals see yeah. Um, you know the world because you know for them it's very different. I know dogs can see only black and white if I'm not wrong. Um, and no, you know cats totally and, black and white. Sorry, totally black and white, right? No, totally black and white. So cats and dogs they 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 are also low ground creatures and yeah. you know it, it's just nice to see. The perspective what is very see. different. Yeah. Yeah, the perspective so, is very that's different. That's why the camera. I think there was one. I tried to do a chess one, but that one kept dragging in the sand now. So. Oh, I think yeah. I think you had one. Uh, where the, 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 the GoPro is actually underneath the chest, right? Uh, yeah, so that one, be, the videos. Uh, that one has an interesting perspective, but sometimes it's a bit too low. The mm. best one is actually on the back of the shoulders. Mm, mm. But the problem with that chest, that Hans design was, uh, the shoulder blades move up and down. Oh, yeah. It causes the thing to tilt. Yeah. So that was the issue with that one. Okay. And, and do the dogs actually feel you know uneasy that there's a camera on the back or they just go, oh, okay, it's okay? Uh, because they are relatively medium to large dogs that addition mm. small amount of weight doesn't really uh, matter to them okay but if you take a smaller dog you put that thing on your yeah, i think they might feel it what, what about cats do cats feel okay with a gopro on their back or do they try to get it off data transfer complete uh, i know sarah is a cat you can try with your cat thanks <laughs> and uh, sarah... my cat, uh, the gopro i think might be they might feel it, it might be too heavy for mm. them especially cats yeah especially cats if you put something away on them they'll tend to like, just freeze and stay there mm. unless yeah. they're really very used to it yep and uh, Lianya says that there was this uh, viral video of a POV of a dog running from its house to the beach that sparked yeah, the that trend. Was... Yeah, I I think that's that's really cool because uh, like I said, you know, to look at it from your pet's perspective would be quite interesting. Um, I don't know. I uh, for cats, I think it might be a bit of a challenge because they are a bit smaller, like what you said. And I, unless I, you have a very very small, very lightweight camera, I mm. think there was some pro- some other photographer did a similar project. I think mm. they put the like those uh, a camera that will take one photo every. 20, 30 seconds mm. then just as the cat goes about his day just see what it gets off alright okay so up next we're gonna see uh, some doggos celebrating the birthday of Otto and Riley let's check this out Wow, birthday party for doggos. Yeah. <laughs> we, we call it party, right? P-A-W-T-E-E. That's, that's the way I try to brand it, but yeah. Ah, okay. But but I think I it's think a very good brand. use that term also. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think it's... Shout out to Back Button Media. So mm-hmm. that was a collaborative event. They wanted to see what it was like. They actually do uh, wedding, weddings, ah. mainly. Weddings and events. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, why the, that's why the logo at the start. Mm-hmm. And then, and uh, with with this kind of shoot, right? You you I, I noticed just now you had like had a, a place where the owners can sit together with the pets and then just shot them and all that. Um, how do you plan for the shoot? Do you do like 
have a timeline and schedule and tell people okay at this time everybody get together and uh, we're gonna take a, a portrait shot with the owners and pets etc etc something like okay, that so uh this so most party shoots is normally the owners will book a venue mm-hmm. then uh depending on how much the venue does they will organize everything uh. so i've worked with this venue many 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 times really mm. so uh, basically they are uh not, i really like it in the sense that they <laughs> they recommend me to clients on uh. Every That's time good. they want to go whole party events, they go there. Mm. So uh, that photo booth option is they will like you can top up, then they'll set up a separate booth area, decorate for you. Mm. Then uh, what happens is I normally do mini roaming. Yep. Then uh, I will just keep like telling you that you want a shot, we can go there, take a shot with your dogs, or anything. Else. Or sometimes the the venue owner, the host also will just like encourage me to a ah we'll take some shots. And 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 do you like provide prints and all that on the spot, or do you send them by by email? Uh, yeah. so depending on the package that they signed up with the mm. venue, then the venue will let me know like uh, are there prints involved. Then I will basically I build them. Then they build a the client account arrangement. I see. And the yeah. packages do do you have like a rate packages, or do you customize everything depending on what they need? Uh, so for this venue is customized for them, oh. but uh, people who engage me directly is a separate package. Normally, no prints. Right. That's good. That's good. Um, the 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 during that entire session where you had all these dogs, you know, how how many dogs were there? I, I lost count. <laughs> I also lost count. Lost count. <laughs> do do any of them like vie for your attention? Because like, you know they they look at you like oh this 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 Basically, human is different. Once you hold food, that's it, ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man. But okay. So uh, the thing is, uh, for large groups of dogs, generally, uh. Because they primarily function as a daycare for dogs, mm-hmm. so all the dogs that are invited, they already know the dog's characteristics, so they know who can mix with who. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, certain dogs sometimes when they see food, they get a bit too excited, <laughs> so they have to be taken away first. Ah. If not, they might start causing trouble. Yes, yes. I I I I'll imagine that as well. Kind of like my former students, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's also cruel of me. But uh, when 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 you when you actually uh work with these animals, okay, as a whole, not just the dogs in, in this birthday yeah. party, um, the, those that kind of get a little bit too, uh, I won't say aggressive lah, but maybe they misbehave a little bit. Do you do you like encourage them or by you know some people will coo or or give them treats? Will that make it better for them or or did they just like uh oh, once they they go into that mood that's it already we just leave them alone? Uh, so this one is, I'm not a trainer. Mm-hmm. My profession, so I won't try and do behavioral correction. Ah, this one, yeah. this again during the pre-shoot consult, I will discuss everything with mm. the owner first. So but, like set boundaries, like if like I discuss them, you want this shot, I might have to do this. Mm-hmm. But uh, is this safe? Or the, how will the dog react? The counting. Kind of yeah. So yep. uh, generally, as long as we, I don't do anything too stupid, or the owner, if the owner forgot to tell me something, then that's another story, lah. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah. that has not happened yet. Oh, that's good. That's good. So I guess during those pre consults, uh, you actually, uh, inform the owners of certain I would say do's and don'ts maybe, to to get. Oh uh, yeah, so I basically mind. tell them like how the shoot will progress, lor. Mm-hmm. Like we'll meet here, uh, then we'll get these shots first. Then after that, we'll head to another place, then do that set of shots. Yep. Yep. Then like uh, well on the shoot itself, then I will give a bit of direction like, okay, you play with the dog now, don't don't bother about what I'm doing. Yep. Or like, oh, yeah, there's certain I say, uh, don't don't call the dog. I will call the dog just to get the eye line, that kind of thing. Ah, and 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 for this uh birthday party, you actually use flash for photography with the dogs. Um, uh, out of curiosity, do animals freak out when they see flash? I try to avoid it as much as possible. That mm. one has no choice because, uh, the the photo booth it was just one window and mm. nothing beside. Right. So right. if I didn't have the fish, I can't balance the shadows on the left. Mm. So it was a very low power with a diffuser just to get enough kicker on this to fill the side. Right, right. Because uh, I I've heard of how animals, you know, they 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 think flash is like lightning, and then they go like you know they get very very some afraid. some animals will react negatively towards flash photography. Mm, yes, yes. And so uh, I try to avoid it as much as I can, but if really no choice, then I will ask the owner first, like, mm. is this okay? <laughs> Will anything happen? That's good. That's good. Okay, so um, 
Speaking of birthdays, uh, like I said just now previously in the, the beginning of the show, it's the month of June and it just so happens to be my birthday month. Uh, uh, since this is my birthday month, uh, we already stated that earlier just now we want to do something really special. Uh, so let's talk about that uh, again later. But uh, here's a little something about what the Love Coaching Project does. Um, the video itself is self-explanatory and this is actually done by the National Volunteer and Philanthropy Centre and you can find this video on their website as well. So let's take a look. Love Coaching Project is about love. If you love cats, we're also asking to share the love with the community. We are a cat rescue organisation entirely run by volunteers. So we help the community cats in need. Those injured or with illnesses, we actually bring them in and we have to take care of it for uh, the time period and then release it back into the community when they're well. And the second part of what we do is cat therapy. We bring cats and their humans to nursing homes and special needs schools to share the message of love. We find that it actually brings families together and the old folks who are either bedridden or in wheelchairs, they're happy to come over to pet the cat, um, talk to the humans, um, talk to the cats. For them, that's their permanent home for the rest of their lives. It provides them a little bit of comfort and warmth and really it just brings across our message of love. A city of good means people who are willing to do their part for others, whether the others are humans or otherwise. It's people just caring for each other. It's a warmer society, I feel. Not so driven by numbers, not so driven by material well-being, but really just growing old together. Now once again, uh, this is a call back to the QR code scanner so you guys can take a look at the recent tip stream and see how far we are coming along and uh, basically uh, use this QR code to scan so that you can actually donate to the Love Coaching Project. Now I'm just going to hop over quickly to see how we are faring so far with regards to the recent tip stream. Um, let me see, okay there we go. So right now, this was before we were, uh, the, the last check was at 212.64. Let's refresh. Have we made 300? Oh, guys, we are so close. Wow. We're so what close. Was Nick, we are at 273.64 now. Ooh. So close. Okay, our target is 300 USD. And like I said, once we hit 300 USD, we, we will actually, um, Nick will actually match 300 USD. Uh, sorry, 300 SGD. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, got to make sure that I got the currency right. Um, our Mizame will match 300 USD pound for pound. So you guys go for 300 USD, I will match 300 USD max. Okay, so this is my promise to you as well. So let's take a look at what um, Love Coaching Project is all about. Okay, so uh, for those of you guys who want to donate to them directly, you can click on the donate section. Um, I'm just going to put a URL on the... Uh, Dionysus? Uh, no, actually we use Razer Tipstream only. Yeah, just use Razer Gold so you can actually get Razer Silver which you can use to accumulate and redeem Razer Gear. So you get rewarded for just showing up and donating. So that's really awesome, okay? If you go with PayPal, uh, you just help PayPal. Okay, so if you donate to PayPal, no problem. I will check how much you donated in PayPal and I will just put it all one lump sum and donate straight from my bank account to Love Coaching Project, okay? So that's how we're going to do it. Um, okay, so anyway, back to the how you can donate to Love Coaching Project. So this is actually how you can donate to them uh, if you want to go directly, alright? You can actually... Um, wait, where is the link? Ah, okay, it's over here. Alright, so you can actually go by PayNow or credit card transfer. Um, you can actually go into uh, make one-time transfer, pay by check. You can make an in-kind donation. Okay, you can donate via Polypad. You can make recurring donations as well through your bank, uh, whether it's DBS, OCBC, or UOB. So you can do that as well. And uh, some of the things that that uh, the Love Coaching Project will do is that they will use that money to do boarding. Okay, so for every cat, their well-being will be it will be uh, taken care of. All right. Uh, so things like supplements and medication and those things can be quite expensive. So all these pro uh, prescribed by vets will be given to them through. Uh, and, and they can only be obtained through financial means. So the only way you can support them, of course, is uh, by helping them out with getting these medications out to the animals, to the cats, all right? 
uh, vet fees also constitute quite a large part of the, uh, the, the expenditure for caring for the cats. Um, operations, of course, you know, it's very nice enough that these people are volunteering. So it's great that we actually contribute to help them to keep the shelter going. And especially now because of the pandemic, right, uh, we, we might see that uh, there's, there's an even greater need for them to, to have more support for operations. And of course, you know, it's always good to start from the, the uh, education, okay? So outreach programs can actually be funded. Um, then they can actually go out there, uh, help support the elderly or people with special needs. Um, you know, they, they do have like cat therapy sessions as well. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that, that is most awesome is that um, they, they let kids with special needs, you know, interact with cats. And I think it's, it's a lovely thing altogether. And finally, of course, they also have rescue assistance. So if you see that there are cats which are injured or sick, um, especially community cats, you know, community cats are not taken out, taken care of by, by a specific owner. It's, it's up to the entire neighborhood to look after them. So um, if they fall sick, it can be quite taxing if someone is to you know pay for all the bills and all that. But here we have Love Coaching Project, which, which will help out with all the rescue assistance. So, all the money will because go into are, They are a very small organization. Yep. They, they can be selective in who they, they help to support because they really don't have that much resources. Yes, yes. And I think it, it's great that we actually try our best to help out through this wonderful little channel. <laughs> I know it's not much, but it, it's a small step and I hope that you guys can give from the heart. Um, Yohan Zizi asked, when is the deadline? The deadline is actually on the 30th of June. So um, actually, to be honest, since the beginning of June, all the Resultive Stream donations will go to Love Coaching Project. It's not just today, it's all the way on the whole of June lah, because it's my birthday month. That's how awesome it is, <laughs> all right? So, okay. Um, cats are just awesome, right? I just love cats. Uh, <laughs> I actually like dogs also, but it's just that I, I can't touch dogs because of religion. But I do touch dogs. Don't tell people. <laughs> uh, man, okay. So, um, I'm just out of curiosity. Uh, do you think, Nick, do you think that cats are easily misunderstood? I, okay, so if you've, from, uh, coming from a dog person initially, right, I didn't really get the appeal of cats at first. It was only after, like, the continued interaction and, like, kind of, like, grew on me. Hmm. So, yeah, I guess for a lot of people, the cats can come off as a bit aloof and uh, they don't. Some would sometimes they will say that they don't really reciprocate the the feelings, are. Uh. Mm -hmm. But if you live or interact with enough cats to know, they actually can be almost like dogs as well. Yep, yep. And I think I think it's like they love you in a different way, like, so to speak. Yeah, and, and I think cats cats can make great companions also. I mean, like uh, if if you can gain their trust and all that. Uh, okay, just want to share with you. Uh, we have a community cat in uh, in in the area where I live called Pinyok. I mean, that's not his real name, but I call him Pinyok because that's the sound he makes. So, um, initially, I found him always quite aggressive, uh, very defensive also, doesn't want to interact with humans, and he's always meowing very loudly into the night all by himself. And then one day, we, we found out that, you know, some of the neighbours and uh, myself, we found out that he probably was abused before lah, because he had some, you know, either that or he got attacked by bigger cats or something, I don't know. But, uh, you know, over time, we look after him and all that. And then he, he just became more friendly and friendly. And now he's like, he literally visits our houses. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It'll take a while to warm up for you. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it, was, it took some time. Uh, my wife and I do feed him from time to time. And, and he's, he's uh, like our friendly neighborhood cat now. Uh, and he looks so much healthier. Last time he used to have like flea, flea, fleas on the back. I think someone brought him to the vet and all that. Um, now his, his ear is, I think they call it tag, is it? There's a they cut is it they cut, the corner. cut or something like that yeah yeah, they tag. yeah so it's tagged really so we we're quite glad that you know Piop is given a, a second life lah and now he's he's healthier looking he, he in fact he looks like he's he's put on a lot of weight um everyone's feeding him and and he's very particular about what he eats you know he's always insisting on temptation you know, I don't know if you guys uh, know about I the brand it is yeah. the correct word yeah eating yeah. thing. Feed him whiskers, I'm not interested. Must feed the addition. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so he's yeah, but he's healthy lah. Uh, I think he goes to the fitness corner and exercise a lot. Cause now whenever if if, if you have seen my Facebook, you've seen a photo of him recently. He looks quite muscular, and like like beefy already. Last time it was like scrawny, and he's got this flea marks on the back, and I think he he 
his butt also got some scratches and all that, so he couldn't really sit properly. But now he's so much better. Yeah, see, my wife says, happy Pyong. Yep. So community cats are awesome. Uh, Dionysus Gray says, we have a community cat that dents the drain and let you pet her head only when you earn that honor. Wow. <laughs> This is like a like those Godfather thing. You kiss the ring only when you reach a certain uh. level. In this case, you can only pat the head once you you attain that level of trust. Now ah, I don't know for for all those people at home right now. If you're watching, um, cats are like wonderful Pokemon creatures, lah. They evolve with you. Yeah, they they they're just so cute. After a while, they you know they got heart level, they increase, and then they earn their trust, and then you can do a lot of wonderful stuff with them. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, I know you have a DJ Osmo Pocket. Maybe one day you can do a documentary on your community cats also. I think it'll be quite awesome. I know some cat owners are just masochistic. Right? They, just, they just like to be abused every day by the cat. <laughs> that one's different. That one, the cat has taken the humans as the pet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, it's quite true. You know, the, the memes, are, they always show the cats always like, uh, human, where's my food? And then after that, you see the human like, you know, being so The, the saying goes, uh, do- uh, dogs have owners, cats have staff. C- cats have what? Staff. Stuff as in what? Stuff, stuff. Oh, <laughs> employed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I think it, it's them cute lah. But but one thing I I like to share, uh, which I will show in a video later, is that uh, cats can be very therapeutic. Yeah. Um, for me personally, when when I feel down, if I see a cat and a pet of a cat, I just feel happier. Uh, I I don't know why. Maybe cats are just natural depression absorbent or something. They are the, like sponge or something, and and it's. It's so nice to see that there are a lot of uh, uh, what do you call that centers out there or not centers organizations like Love Coaching Project that actually adopt uh, cat assisted therapy sessions and mm. they really do bring smiles to to people who, you know, like you know the, the the seniors in the old folks home or kids with special needs and all that. So it's just really awesome to 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 see this lah. Yeah. So mm. um, let let's take a look at how cats can be natural healers in this uh, special episode by Channel News Asia Insider. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, Channel News Asia did not pay me to, to play this video. It's just that I found it on YouTube and yeah, I just want to share with you guys, okay? Yeah. I just realized I played the wrong video again. I, it seems like the numbers all jumped. Sorry about that. Oh, no. <laughs> Murphy, why are you here? It says number five here, but it's not. Nah. Oops. Yeah. Oh, five is there. Okay, that was my fault. I I saw the number wrongly. That was my bad. That was my bad. Sorry. <laughs> These things happen. You see, that's the best part about being a vlogger. If you are a vlogger, you make all these mistakes. You can just edit it out. Live streamer, once it's out there, it's out there. And I'm really sorry about that. Sorry. Okay. So let's play the trailer proper. This is a Chinese Asia insider. I'm not someone who readily opens up about my feelings. So, I seek comfort in my cats. I feel more comfortable talking to the cats about my problems than to humans. I joined this whole volunteering work, I was happily living in my own bubble. So I wasn't really aware. I know there are disabled people. Only after I joined this whole love cushion thing, I get to know more. It's more on, I get to know how they feel about it. When they bring the cats, I feel the cats very gentle and very peaceful. Sometimes the cats do a funny action. I also feel some joy with the, and the happiness, a very special relationship. Very special. I, sometimes I cannot uh, describe what what sort of type of relationship in between animals and us. After my father passed on last two years, we were quite devastated. I have eight cats at home. Sometimes you get sad. You just have to have a cat next a cat next to you. You just have to stroke them. You just you get make you happier. So another reason why I'm doing this cat therapy is, is also because of my father. Because what he told me was, if you have the means to help others, do help them. You will not lose anything from helping others. Actually, I really love that last sentence. You do not lose anything when you help others. So it's 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 a very... Mm. Oh, 
thought-provoking sentence. I think it's a good way to end that, that particular episode. So, well done, CNA Insider. Oh, che, I talk as if I'm the director of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know it's, 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 it's very heartening to see the effect, the positive effect it has on the people at the old folks home. Like, the guy was like, I don't know how I feel. I feel good and all that. And then he was like, you know, touching the, and petting the cat. And, and I, I don't know. I, to be honest, because my wife and I can't have cats at home, but we do feel very, very envious of friends who actually have cats of their own. Um, it, it's just so nice to have cats. I mean, like Sarah. Sarah always shows pictures of a cat, uh, the, the one in black and white. I can't remember the name, but... Don. Uh, uh, sorry? What? The cat's name is Don. Don. Ah, yeah. So I just like, oh, look at that. The cat is so cute. Uh, we have a friend from JB. Uh, his name is John Dagoon. Also, his cat has got this very particular look on the eyes, and she's, she's really awesome looking also. And you know, there's that, that, there's that sense of love and connection between owner and, and the cat that both my wife hope to, to, to have someday as well. I, I don't know, it's just, it's not the same as having a fish. Lah. A, a lot of people say, hey, you can have a fish for a pet, but you, you can't cuddle the fish. <laughs> yeah. Sarah is asking, what is Nick doing? Oh, yeah. I was doing Nick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're tickling the cat. <laughs> okay. So, um, when, when, Nick, when when you work with some of your own, uh, some of your clients, do you sense that you know uh, with some clients the, the the bond between the pet and owner is a lot more stronger as opposed to other pet uh, other pairings? Do you, can you sense it? Uh, there are certain ones, especially the the senior ones, the older ones. So last twenty nineteen, there was a I realized a lot of my clients were like uh, considered senior but. And a lot of them have been with the owners like since they were like one, two years old. Mm. So you can really see like the bond between them and the whole family. So like they're really close with the animals. Yep. So yeah, they it's I guess happy and sad the fact that they realized that they wanted photos, but yeah, because they know that might not have much time left. Mm. Before the, 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 the pet crosses the rainbow yeah. bridge. Yeah. Or sometimes it's like they're getting old, but the, it's still mobile. They want to take while the pet mm. is still mobile and active. Lah. And, and, and I realized that uh, when I created the new title page for, for this episode, I took a photo of the cat. Um, do, do you happen to have a photo of the cat? Maybe you could share a little bit of the story? Because I, I do recall you sharing a little bit of the story with me, so I'd like you to share it with the audience as well. Uh, let me find it. Photo specifically. Zig says, I thought I see a pudi tat. Okay, so while Nick is uh, getting Oops. the image up, uh, let's take a look at... What we can do to support a love coaching project again, here's a QR code uh, where you can scan and then after that contribute to the Reason Tips stream. And uh, hopefully, we can surpass the 300 mark. Uh, we are trying to reach 300 USD. Uh, if not, you can always hit the follow and subscribe button so you can uh, be notified the next time we come on live on the live stream as well. All right, okay, back to you, Nick. Okay, so yeah, this cat, uh, a special case, it's a young cat, but. It had a, I think it was some gastrointestinal issues, mm. and it basically it was really, just really young and sweet. Uh. So the owners they contacted me to do this shoot because they knew it's gonna be soon. So it was really like really last minute, one one week notice to go and uh, go and shoot. Uh. So uh, because this dog, this cat was ad adopted from like downstairs community cat, literally bring up. To adopt one, uh. so we actually managed to do this outdoors in the place where they where he used to hang out. So he was com kind of relatively comfortable there. Mm. What a rare times we can actually shoot outdoors with a cat. Mm. And funny, uh. yeah. So the cat has. Cross over there. This part, yeah, so that's yeah. the you know, that's okay. the wound that they have to keep cleaning. Oh no. Poor baby. Yeah, I said. But yeah, it was it's one of those things uh, where you at least you know you kind of like help a bit. Mm. So the so the, the cat has actually crossed the rainbow bridge already. Yep. Yeah. And uh what, yeah, was so it difficult? Uh, yeah, you... most cats can't shoot outdoors. Yeah. Very rarely uh, I can share one case where because these cats used to go for the love coaching therapy, mm -hmm. uh, we actually did a full uh, portrait session outdoors with two cats. 
Okay, why why is it difficult to have have a shoot with cats outdoors? Generally, cats are indoor creatures, mm. and they don't like changes environment. So, like uh, like how love coaching, they, there's a selection process for cats for therapy. Uh. they yep. need to be comfortable with changes in environment. They need to be comfortable with strangers touching them, everything. Uh. So these two cats, they've gone for therapy before, mm-hmm. so they are used to all this. So, uh. The owners were also volunteers with love coaching, so they engaged me to do this portrait session as well. Yeah. It was quite fun. Uh. <laughs> Let me see if I can screen share this yep. one. Yeah. This was quite a while back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it was basically a couple and cat. Uh. Uh, that's a cute. A uh, few people in the chat will recognize them. Oh, they. The, the, yeah, the cats actually have their own so, bandana. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I got fashion on. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, so you, this kind of photo, you may realize that it's basically, he probably thinks he's a wild cat. In, <laughs> he's doing his own net geo pose. Uh. <laughs> well, was this in the botanic gardens or something? Yes, botanic gardens. Ah, can I recognize it from the bench. And look at that, so cute in the box. <laughs> yeah, then, go, then go home, then get kind of weird shots with you. <laughs> Always like that, yeah, yeah. It, they, 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 when they post, they really post. Oh, yeah. can, can we take a look at the, the one where it's in the sun? The fourth, from, yeah. Oh, that's so adorable. I, I love it when cats do this. They, they look so at peace, enjoy, enjoying the sun. Look at that, look at that guys. So cute, right? Oh, man. <laughs> it's like curious. Oh, look at that, so cute. Yeah, so only, only with cats that have, they are comfortable with others, then you can do these kind of shoots. Yeah, sleepy, sleepy cat though, that's what uh, Zig says. Uh, it, 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 it's very nice to see cats, you know, just relaxing and chilling out. And, and, and that's when the, that's one of the, my favorite times to do, like, just go up to them and go like, mm. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if you, you, you know what I mean, like, but I just like to go up to the cat and go, mm. yeah, that's what I do to my Pyop also. He likes it. I, I don't know why. I mean, when if I stop, uh, sometimes get grumpy. You try and read them out. Huh? So, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't don't that one. I I have to agree. You are asking for a death wish. Yeah. Okay. So um. You you also did something with with local and I think just now I accidentally played the video a little bit. They had a Catri Catri space launch or something. Ah. Uh, okay, yeah. So the story behind it was they used to be in another place. Then there was the time where they moved to us. A dedicated category place. Uh. Mm, mm. So that was like when the, they had their own place finally. Okay, Let, let's take a look at the video. Okay, so obviously I think that 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 time lapse was done before uh, the pandemic, of course. So don't, don't, don't way before. yeah, way before. So don't 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 uh, report us to the authorities. Okay, right now we still have to practice social distancing. Uh, so there's no way we can actually have so many people, so many humans being in that same room. But I would love to be in a room surrounded by many cats, just like that. It's like so awesome. So so if I were to go to Love Kuching right now, they have this catry space. What? How, how, how does it work? Do, am I allowed to just so go in there and play the cats? by appointment only, so it's only for people who are adopting or if uh-huh. you are, you're there to volunteer. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, it's by appointment ah. only. Okay, so, so you cannot go in just for fun and you go like, oh, no. I want to play the kitty. Ah, okay, okay, good. Because you know, I think the cats will be stressed out also, right? Yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. you like you can do ad hoc, like play, I think they call it play clean volunteer. So mm-hmm. you go there, help the clean up, then you get to 
help play with the cats lah. So kita uh, entertain. Okay. Okay. So I think I think my wife would like to do that because I was telling her last night. Uh, we can actually go over there and volunteer. Um, and and Nick, how often do you volunteer at Love Kuching? Um, my volunteering there is quite ad hoc. So basically, when they need photos, then they let me know. Ah, and I see, I see. Every time we go down. Hmm. And then uh, when 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 we talk about uh how how they 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 let you play with cats, how long can you stay there for? Uh, I'm. The, the volunteers need to leave. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I think when the so, cats are really tired out, see, then it's time to uh, go. Uh, I see. Because the cats generally, they don't get that much interaction until the volunteers come in. So, mm. especially kittens, uh, they need the, they need to get socialized to people mm. and not just the same person, like different people as well. Yep, yep. To get them used to other people. Understandable. Understandable. Okay. So, uh, let's let's take a look at how much we've accumulated so far. I really hope we've surpassed the 300 USD mark. Sure, past 300. I hope so. I hope so. Because <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, and, and I really hope that this will, you know, help with the kit taste. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, we were at 273 just now. So, let's refresh and see how far we've gone. Refreshing. Eight. Oh, it didn't seem oh. to update. Did I get it right? No, it doesn't seem to update. It's still 273. Okay, guys, we're still a fair bit away from our mark. I think we're... Let me just refresh just to confirm. Okay, still 273. We are very close, guys. We are very close. Um, let's let's try to hit that 300 mark. By we haven't done it yet. Yeah, we got 15 minutes left. We haven't done it yet. <laughs> we'll send cats over to you. Yeah, <laughs> no, we wouldn't even do it. No, that's an incentive, man. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would love to have cats come over my place. I mean, my mom would, would not enjoy that. She would probably scream and, and probably kick me out of the house and, and or something. But it's then funny because my, my mom is actually um, not able to walk well. But because mm -hmm. she's so afraid of cats, when cats approach her, she suddenly like plus 200% agility speed. You know? Can run faster than those middle-aged aunties on the MRT rushing for a train <laughs> seats. It's amazing. It's amazing. But guys, okay, come on. We, we are almost there. Uh, let me just share the, the ad speech again. This is the QR code. Okay. Uh, let's let's try our best to hit 300 USD mark. I think we are close to it. We're about... My math sucks. 27 USD away. So very, very close, guys. If everyone can just donate a little bit, we will get there. And and, and Nick will, will match. And I will match as well. And we will go uh, and and support Love Coaching Project. Okay. So let's, yeah, let's go for that. I was saying something in mm. the chat. Uh, what is Sarah saying? So it's true, like like people like uh people who never interacted with cats before, they mm. they don't know what to expect. Mm. So that's why uh it ties back to the outreach portion of the coaching project. Mm. So mm. after they interacted with the cats, then they oh so soft, so nice to pet. Then after a while they start to less fear, then more sign sign uh, is what Sarah said in the chat. Ah, uh, yeah, but uh, Sarah, Sarah, trust me, my, my mom is not like that. She's <laughs> no no hope already. <laughs> I brought a cat over to her. Uh, she ran faster than Usain Bolt. Yeah, cannot really. Uh, I think for my mom, it's, it's beyond a but. But uh, my dad, he's allergic, but he still plays with the cat, but he'll suffer. Mm. His nose will turn red, lah, but he will just... It's okay, I love cats. <laughs> he was tearing already. <laughs> I think no, a he, lot he's, of people he's not who own bad, cats huh? are, they, even though they're allergic, they just like continue. When yeah, yeah, he, he'll do that. So so he'll be like tearing his... And he, because Pimop does come to our place, like he'll climb up all the way to the ninth floor and uh, wow. he'll just wait outside, sometimes hang around the, the corridor and all that. And, and that's why my mom will scream into the house and go, ah, the devil is here. You know, she literally says that in Malay, of course. Um, then my dad will come out. It's, it's okay. It's just a cat. Eh? Then he'll pick up Pimop and then play with it. Then you know you can see the the nose, right? <laughs> Cannot make it really. But he's still like, it's okay. I love the cat. You know, yeah. So so, uh, Anna Satan. No, she she goes. Okay, she says something Satan, but the the word before that I cannot say it out because it's vulgar. <laughs> yeah. I would, I don't know. Nah, it's okay. I'm not gonna share it here. It's okay. I, I don't get banned from Twitch. Yeah, but it it was really bad. So, yeah. Um. That, that, that being said, I think uh, it, it, it's good that uh, we have associations like uh, uh, Love Coaching Project or rather organizations like Love Coaching Project. Uh, the outreach program is fantastic, especially when, when you know you, you help rehabilitate people. And I think uh, kids with special needs and old folks homes, uh, people at old folks homes when they, they interact with cats and then they find comfort, it, it really shows what cat assisted therapy can really do for you. And I think it's, it's really awesome. Okay, so uh, Nick, uh, 
we we also see that you kind of do like a documentary of sorts with with a vlog style video. Um, and I think this this was something you used to do so quite actively. Um, in this case, you did a shoot for a uh, dog's hydrotherapy. And, and to be honest, I, I before before I saw this video, I had no idea there was such a thing. You know, uh, I've I've heard of cat assisted therapy, dog assisted therapy, but I didn't know that animals also have therapies of their own where they actually go through a uh, rehabilitation process. So let's let's take a look at this one here where we have Felix going through his day hydrotherapy. Okay, stand by. Guys, I have something to share with you. I just refreshed the page. We are at 288.64 USD. Ooh, nice. We are very, very, very close. So I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I think uh, we just need to push a little bit more and we're going to make 300. <laughs> so awesome, guys. Thank you so much for all the donations, really. Uh, just hoping for that small little bit, you know. Uh, let's, let's go for that. Uh, <laughs> no, he looked like he really enjoyed... The water. Yeah, yeah. Doggo swim, swim. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's really cool that, you know, doggos actually have this opportunity to go for hydrotherapy. Um, but, Nick, I'm very curious. How, how hmm. does that help the dog? Okay, so this video was taken as a favor for a client. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, I don't normally do that. I was also, I think at that time, I also was new to the GoPro, so I was using it to try out some new oh, things. Experimentation. So basically, uh. hydrotherapy for dogs is similar to... Uh, physiotherapy for humans. Dogs that go for it, uh, they might have hip dysplasia, some mobility issues. So it's a kind of like a low impact exercise to strengthen the muscles that they use for movement. So there's a difference between just taking a dog to go to a swimming pool and swim and having a hydrotherapy session. Yep. Because these people, they, are, they, are, they have to take certification courses, everything. So they know how to handle the dog safely and how to specifically work that muscle group that they need to strengthen. Mm. Cool, cool. Yeah. And uh, I understand that you recently just joined the Professional Photographers Association of Singapore, PPAS. So yeah. what, what, <laughs> what compelled <laughs> you to join this association? Uh, so like anything that motivated a lot of change this time is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's basically, true. yeah, I guess it's good to have a band of people who are in the same industry to have like a stronger voice if you need, if you're concerned for your industry mm -hmm. to voice out against yep. policies or for policies uh. hmm. and I guess I guess uh, being uh, as part of an association it gives you uh, a chance to be part of a larger movement uh, have more voice so that you know when we need yeah. to have change positive change for the industry for the photography industry at least we can be heard by the relevant authorities so uh, now you are considered a professional <laughs> okay. I think I think, it's, I think you could possibly be the very first PPS member a uh, general member who's actually a, a specialist in pet photography, to be honest. Really? Yeah, I think so because I have been in a I've been in an association for I think since twenty nine, I think twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen. I think last year, yeah, twenty nineteen. Then um, I could be wrong. I haven't been keeping track of time again, but uh, I have not come across any pet portrait photographer. So I think you could be the first. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting. So anyway, uh, for those of you guys watching at home, uh, the PPS actually has got a very special deal going on right now. Okay, I won't call it deal, but more like a invite to all to join. Um, as of now, if you want, what you can do is, uh, let me just share the page with you guys. Okay, this is the PPS website. Okay, I can put the link here for you so you can see for yourself later on. 
Okay, so if you look at the joint section, um, and this is open to all who are part of the photography industry. So if you're a photographer, you're a makeup artist, you're a stylist, you're a crew member, you're an assistant, it's time to join the PPS, okay? And uh, this is actually an opportunity for you guys to actually be part of something even bigger. So um, right now, they do have the three tiers of membership. We have general member, we have full member and associate member. Um, for general members, you can actually be a part of this uh, association um, as long as you are as long as you apply for it okay now i know it says here joining fee is 60 dollars okay and it's lifetime membership but because of the covid19 pandemic there is a special right now on checkout if you type in solidarity okay i just spell it out for you guys in the chat box uh you get a 60 dollars waived you become a lifetime member of the pps yeah. as a general member for free and nick that's what you did right yeah yeah so so it's, it's really awesome um, and if you want to upgrade, you can become a full member. Uh, but of course, you know, you need to have, uh, there's a, a little bit of a criteria here. Uh, you need to be a professional with minimum 70%, 70% photography derived income. So if you are a full-time professional photographer with a uh, Accra based registered business, you can become a full member. But if you're a freelancer or a casual photographer, just want to, to learn about more about photography and just hang out with some of the, the association members, okay? Um, and you do not have a registered business, you can be a part of this. So if you're a freelancer, I strongly encourage you to just sign up for free um, as a general member, okay? And of course, as a general member, there are some stuff that you can, uh, uh, some, some of the things that you can enjoy, okay? You have access to the PPS private Facebook group. We do share tips and tricks on photography here as well. We have the member deal section, so you can actually have discount price for, for some products. I think we have some related stores as well. Uh, special pri priority and rates for PPS related photography events and workshops and of course you get our you become part of the mailing list you get emails on new articles and upcoming photography and business events now the PPS has become quite um, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, what's the term <laughs> I wouldn't say popular I don't want to use the word popular but more like more known I think it's because of the COVID-19 like what Nick has said yeah um, because uh, the PPS committee members have actually put together a lot of uh, hard work uh, getting a set of safety protocols which are um, approved by the government authorities so that we photographers can start work in phase two of the circuit breaker. A very useful cheat sheet. A very useful cheat sheet. And uh, the safety protocols are something that you need to follow because during this phase two circuit breaker, it doesn't mean that the COVID-19 is gone, but more like you have the opportunity to continue working in a safe environment and ensure that all those people working with you guys especially crew assistants talents clients are all kept safe also because we still need to maintain social distance order we still need to maintain uh obviously uh safety pr protocols so that you know the, the virus will not spread and things like that just in case because the the, the, the problem with the covid19 is it's asymptomatic you can't tell if someone is sick unless you go for a test so one of the things that uh, the PPS committee members have done and is put together a site, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, sort of like a SOP or guidelines on what you should do doing an actual photo shoot in a studio or even on set uh, to ensure the safety of all the stakeholders within your shoot. So this is something that's very important. And if you are a member uh, of the PPS, you will know this already by now because we've been sharing it on the Facebook group. But if you're not a member, this is the time to join us because it's free. You know, and it's lifetime membership. So people like Sarah, you may not be a photographer, but you're working in the media industry. You should join as well. So it's awesome. Okay. And uh, it, it, you know how it is. Cinematography and photography, um, it does kind of interlink, you know, the, 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 they can coexist and things like that. All right. So uh, Nick, hmm. you're in another union for video. It's okay. You can always join both. It's all right. <laughs> we are open to all. Okay, so Nick, uh, quick question for you. Life-wise, yes. what has changed since COVID-19? Like, basically, after the lockdown, then like all the shoots get either postponed or cancelled. Oh, man. So, yeah. Luckily for me, my jobs are a bit sick. Good and bad is a bit cyclical. Mm. So, it came uh, just as it's hitting the dip. But I normally, my May, June is supposed to be peak. Mm. So throughout the game, we were like, uh. oh man. So yeah la, try and run promos, keep contact clients. Mm. And, and because and for me, I really cannot do anything unless I meet the animals face to face. Then that's that was not allowed, so cannot do anything now. Did you try the FaceTime thing? Because I saw some photographers they do some FaceTime thing. Not the same, right? It's not the same request. Mm. Because you need you need to be there to read and 
a lot of the because uh, dogs and cats are not strictly visual animals. Mm-hmm. They they go mainly smell, sight, sound. Yeah. So you need the presence there, like, Not it's not quite the same. Understand, understand. And uh, Dionysus Grace says that you shoot dinosaurs now. <laughs> ah, so yeah, bot lah. Nothing to shoot. Just yeah. try lah. I, I I've Watch seen your your shots. Your Velociraptor blew from Jurassic World, I think. Ah uh, yeah. Watch yeah. your show. Try to photo. Take some of your tips. Try talk photography. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We. I. I mean. Uh. It's. It's. Uh, the skills of life. Yeah, keep the skills alive, right? Like, uh, like for for example, you know, some people they they couldn't shoot, so they start live streaming and then you know become <laughs> really good at it somehow. I'm not gonna say my name lah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, Dennis says you need to return your dinosaur over to the owner. Okay, um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> so uh, other than that, what other projects have you come up with during these extraordinary times? Or rather, what have you done to keep the income coming? Uh, basically, I've been basically just that's it lah. Then uh, on the side, I've been doing a bit of courier for a private company lah. So at least got some income on the side to keep the expenses a bit mm. lower. I think yeah. I think you're not the only one doing that. A, a lot of my photographer friends yeah. have actually gone to uh Grab to do do to do mm. food delivery and things like that. And I think I think it's it's good that you know photographers um uh, are capable of being flexible. You know, uh, and and try to adapt to to the changes. Cause I I I do have interactions with fellow photographers who totally give up because of COVID nineteen. They they got no income, they got no job, and they just go on Facebook and rent twenty four seven. Yeah, well, I cannot tahan that one. But there are people out there who actually try their best to to make do with what they have and look into other sources of income, and and yeah lah. But now now that we're in phase two already. Thank goodness, you know, everybody's yeah. able to to start work again. So, uh, but I'm just thankful that I have the the privilege of being able to choose not to do anything around too, Yeah, so, yeah. Thankful for that also. I think that's that also, lah. And and I think yeah. it's good that you know you 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 are okay with doing something else other than just wait it up. Um. The 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 very fact of the matter is this: at the end of the day, um, we know that good times will come back, right? Yeah. So in your case, uh, let's say for example, now that phase two is on again, it's li- it's not on again. Phase two is live. Um, yeah. if someone were to engage you for a project, you know, a potential client, uh, what would be the criteria that you look out for? Uh, so my private portrait clients, I basically when I talk to them, I find out whether they, like, like you mentioned, like how the relationship with their pets are. Mm-hmm. And the kind of shoots, the shots they are looking for. Uh. Yep. So like, I'll, I'll tend to ask them like, uh, so which which uh, which shot from my portfolio do you really like, or what? Uh, you can show me examples, uh. So if they show me examples of things that are things that are really outside of my kind of look or style, then I will try and let them down gently. Mm-hmm. Manage the expectations, uh. Yes, kind That's expectations good. very important. Yeah, very very important. Learn before. <laughs> <laughs> How what what happened? <laughs> I'm very curious now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I didn't basically I I during the consult I didn't really pay attention to the kind of picture she was looking for at the mm, time. Mm. So when it came to the deliverables, they requested for a lot of uh post processing, which I don't normally do. Mm, I see. So that was yeah, it was my bad for not expect like setting your expectations on that one. Mm. Okay, it's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. We all learn from from somewhere, and 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 where and how can potential clients reach you? Maybe you can share your website and uh, show the contact link or something like that. So I am more active on shoot sphere. Mm-hmm. Ah. Instagram. Yeah, I need to pull out the tab to the window. Okay, no problem. So yeah, I am more active on Instagram. Can reach me via DM. Uh, if you go here, mm-hmm. there is basically social media, main website. Ah, uh, so I I know you shared the trick about having a custom email <laughs> page, but I'm lazy. No, that one that one different lah. <laughs> uh, then uh, if you go to the contact, it will just that's my contact number. Yep, it's public SMS, WhatsApp, whatever. I'll reply or email or you can use the web form if you want. Ah, okay. So yeah. That's good. 
very easy and accessible to content uh, to, to yeah. reach you because uh, because I've seen photographers with 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 uh, they, 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 they tell me that they, you know they don't have much business so I say okay can we take a look at your website and they don't have a contact contact page <laughs> so a bit hard basically la. I think excuse not to contact you lah <laughs> maybe maybe yeah okay anyway any advice to the audience uh, regarding regarding yeah, working with animals and photography like questions <laughs> sorry like, like, I advise regarding what taking photos of your pets. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, or anything to do with working with animals, working with pets, or, or photography in general. I would say, uh, like I mentioned at the start, you need to know your subjects first. Mm. So, uh, besides basic photography knowledge, you need to understand your subject. So, I would rec- actually recommend reading more about animal behavior first. Mm. So learn to read, learn to read your pets, learn to understand what they're thinking. Then from there you can direct them for the shoot lah. Yep. And the NSS Grace says you must smell. <laughs> uh, that one, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the secret is out now. Ah, okay. So something, something for me to take note of. I think it's it's a very cool secret though. Not many people know this. You know, it, I don't it will... know whether it works for everybody. Ah, then again, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, so let's take a look again at the Reddit stream. See how how far we come along. Cause I did notice some people actually uh donating again. So let's see. Let's refresh. Da, 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 da. Heavy. Oh, guys, we made it. Woo! We did it, Nick. We did it. <laughs> we've gone past three hundred four. Nice. Uh, sorry, we've got three hundred four US dollars sixty four cents. So that's really awesome. And uh, actually, I think I can I can see. Uh, shall we look at the scoreboard? Let's look at the scoreboard. Wow, <laughs> my wife is the most num- <laughs> the biggest supporter for today. Nice. <laughs> um, Looks like you're coming out a lot of money, man. Yeah, so so it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Yay! Because my wife really loves cats, so it, that's that's all there is to it. We just love cats, and we just want to show support for Love Coaching Project. And on top of that, of course, uh, Nick, uh, you made a promise also to pledge. Hundred um, sing dollars. Three hundred sing dollars, and Yao Mizame will match with three hundred USD. So, that's a lot of money going over to the Love Coaching Project, and it's all for the meow meows. And I think we've succeeded. Our mission is accomplished. Congratulations! Well done, everyone. Woo! I I wish at this point I have a cheer emoticon or something. I don't know how to <laughs> set it up, but I yeah, yeah. In the words of Spartans, three hundred. Um, au au au. <laughs> I don't know what sound they make. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Meow. Yes. Meow. Oh, but, but wait, 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 Nick, Nick, I gotta let you hear this. I don't know if you can hear it, but this is really awesome. I just found out you can actually uh-huh. do this with Google Home. Hey, Google, how does a cat sound like? This is a cat. Oh, <laughs> can, can you hear it? It's quite soft, but... Very soft. Yeah, let me just increase the volume. Hey, Google, how does a cat sound like? This is a cat. <laughs> oh. Like that. Yeah, so we managed to help the Meow Meows. Our mission is accomplished. Well done, guys. This is yeah. really awesome. Everyone has been very, very supportive, and I really love the fact that you guys have done this. And of course, you know, it's not just today. We still have the rest of the month. Uh, and I do have uh, another episode coming out on the 27th of June uh, at 5 p.m. Now, I know I said 27 of June because I'm not going to live stream this coming Tuesday because I have a meeting. I can't live stream during my meeting. So I'm going to take a break this Tuesday and next Tuesday. So I'm going to take a break. I'm really sorry about this, but uh, it's just the way it is. Um, but I'll be back on Saturday. So next week and the week after, I'm only streaming only once. One time only. The whole yeah. week. Okay. And I'll come back to the same schedule in July with twice a week. Okay. And uh, I'm actually working on something. So I'll share it when I'm back in July or rather next Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah. So there's that. Um, Sarah says luckily I'm on headphones else my Google will do the same huh? I must test with Dawn if she cares or not yeah, yeah, yeah you should try maybe Dawn will, will notice you know if Google Home tries to be funny like a cat or something like that but this is awesome I think it's really cool uh, that we managed to secure enough uh, for for our mission today so Nick well done well done well done to everyone all around watching us at home as well thanks you guys yeah okay Nick so thank you so much for being a part of the show uh, I think it's, it's really awesome to have uh, yeah, you on board 
I think the, the first time we met was when I, when I went over to CRC. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, man, long time ago. But uh, yes, uh, it, it's been a very insightful uh, a- experience with you uh, throughout this entire episode, learning more about how uh, the Love Code Chain Project operates and how you operate as a photographer. And more importantly, how we can help cats and you know, interact, how we can interact better with our pets as well. Uh, hmm. for, for Just a quick question. Huh? How about people who shoot fish? Uh? How are uh? Actually, this one is, I've seen quite a, a nice size hole. Basically, what they do is they put a macro or lens flat against the tank, then they light from the top. Oh. Then they really have to aim on. Yeah, I've seen that before. Oh, man. A- a- yeah. Have you done that they before? Done already, I cannot. Too, too difficult, right? <laughs> what, what, is it not the camera from the tank? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, possibly. Okay, so anyway, Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. I'll just do the closing. I'll, 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 I'll just uh, mute you for a bit and I'll put you aside. Oh, I feel like throwing you away. Here. So sorry. <laughs> I'll put you in the kitty corner. <laughs> okay. Oh dear, he's going away now. <laughs> so sorry about that. Okay, okay. All right, I'll, I'll stand by. I'll, I'll have a chat with you later. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, this is really awesome. Look at that, we, we've actually succeeded. Um, we have met our uh, our goal. We've reached 304 US dollars. Okay, we have 64 cents. Okay, so let's see how much it is in uh, SGD. Let's convert. We have actually, oh, 425 sing dollars. That's pretty good. Yay, that's awesome. And I will match that. I will donate 425 sing. So plus Nick. Uh, 300 sing so that's about quite, quite, quite a sum lah. yeah we're close to I think 1k uh, that's awesome so 1k will go to Love Coaching Project yay many many money for all the kitties I, I hope this is uh, I mean I mean, I, I hope this is uh, uh, able to help the Love Coaching Project and I'm very very proud of you guys I, I think everyone here deserves a hug mm. okay hug okay good oh, I'm kitty cat meow meow yeah so we, 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 we've actually succeeded I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. And of course, you know, um, the live stream will still go on uh, with our weekly episodes. And uh, if you guys still want to show support for Love Coaching Project, again, because it's my birthday month, it will go all the way until 30th of June. Um, this is, this is uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's an ongoing uh, donation. If you, if you are not watching live stream, you can still donate through the Razor Tip stream. It'll still be live and online. Okay, so thank you so much for, for being very generous. Uh, let me just put the link up again if you want to donate. There we go. Thank you, Friday. So Friday is going to share with you guys the link to Razor Tip stream. And of course, if you guys want to uh, participate in the ongoing contest featuring the, the a chance to win the Think Tank Photo Retrospective V2.0, any size you want, we'll ship it out from Australia. To If you are in Singapore, you can receive it, of course. Um, we will send it out to anyone over the world. Okay, so this is actually a contest. It's still ongoing right now. Uh, but the catch is you need to watch the previous episode, which is already uploaded on YouTube, uh, featuring Sebastian Tan of Shooting Gallery Asia. The answer is there somewhere. Uh, do check it out as well. I put the link up as well so you can still join and participate in case you missed it last episode. Okay, so this is actually your chance to win a Think Tank photo bag. That's right, it's, it's an awesome bag. Okay, Think Tank Photo, they make wonderful bags, all right? And again, if you guys have not, you can use the QR code over here or hit the follow and subscribe button to keep yourself, uh, or rather to, to, to be notified when we come online the next time. So it's really awesome, okay? Uh, when do I stream? Satellite link established. Friday is sharing the streaming schedule right now. So it's on every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and on Saturdays at 5 p.m. Again, I'm just letting you guys know Next Tuesday, I will not be streaming. I'll be taking a break because I need to go for a meeting and I can't escape that. Um, someone suggested like streaming on another day. I, I, I don't think I want to do that <laughs> because it's a bit too late. I'm trying to secure more guest speakers on the show. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to email me. Uh, this is my contact details. Link established. If you have any suggestions on who else I should bring onto the show, I do have some uh, uh, photographers on hand that I want to bring to the show but it's just that uh, I need to confirm with them that's why I'm not able to share with you who's coming out on 27 but let me get back to you on that as soon as possible again follow my social media channels this is actually where you can be informed when I come online the next time or you know who my next guest speaker is okay so with that do stay oh okay with that do stay safe it's still relevant I almost started that because uh, I thought that you know now face 2 already no need to 
wish that. But no, no, no. The COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing. So do stay safe, take care of yourself. Um, if you are a photographer working through the phase two of the circuit breaker, make sure you follow the PPS safety protocols. It really helps a lot. And make sure you join PPS. Again, call to action. Go and join the PPS website. Uh, sorry, join the PPS by going to the website. Okay, pps.sg slash join. Key in solidarity on checkout. That's the discount code. You get $60 waived for your lifetime membership as a general member. So it's really awesome. Okay, and now with that, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys when I see you on the 27th of June. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Come with me And you'll be In a world of your imagination Take a look And you'll see Into your imagination We'll begin With a spin Traveling in the world of my creation On three, one, two.